Are you looking for a faster video? Well, today it's a live stream and I know you're probably looking for a really nice and tidy edited down video, but I have ways for you to make it faster. You can click that little gear on the YouTube settings right there on the video and adjust the playback speed. Make me sound like a chipmunk and it'll go a lot faster. You can also look and see if there's timestamps for this project in the description. And if you're on a desktop, you can hover over the time bar at the bottom of the screen and see if it's chunked up into chapters. And then that way you can go directly to the step you're looking for. And lastly, you can also tap on the screen on the right hand side of the video picture or on the left hand side to make the video jump ahead forward or backward if you're on a mobile device. And you can adjust that amount in your settings so you can have complete control over how much it jumps. So if you are on a desktop, you can use the fast forward or the rewind and that will make it fast go faster as well. You can also enable subtitles and the little CC on the screen will enable closed captioning. That way, if I I am a little bit harder to understand with that double playback speed, the subtitles might help you out. All right, well, I know that it's not a nice little edited video, but if you sew with me, we'll get there together and it'll be lots of fun. And now for the live stream. Happy sewing. Hello, it's been forever. <laughs> How are you? Everything look and sound okay? I feel like it's been so long that um, I'm losing my touch setting up, you know? So the last time I streamed was making the overalls. I, I definitely am still doing lots of video and stuff, um, but I, I and a lot of you know this because you're there. I hang out in the guild and I'm doing a lot for the skill building sessions. So welcome, welcome. Hi, Michelle. Hey, Hannah, Amanda, Shem, Delwyn, Rebecca, Amy. How's it going? Happy uh, Wednesday. It's Wednesday. Yeah. Okay. So usually July is um, men's wear sewing month. It's just my personal tradition. I really like sewing men's wear this month because um, my husband's birthday at the, is at the end of the month. And so it's kind of been a tradition for me to sew him something. And when I started the live stream, there was a few years there, quite a few years, where I just couldn't manage it every year. Um, and then when I started the live stream, I was like, you know what? I just, I love sewing menswear. So they're in their hard to find patterns. So it's always nice to highlight the ones we can find. And I do tend to sew primarily from two companies. Uh, and I think it's just because they have the most straight up basic menswear that my husband likes. So. Um, yes, Mullen, it has. Hey, Sue. Sunny England. Nice. It's pretty warm here, but um, I'm up at my office. It's a little cooler up here. It's hot in my office because of this building, the way this building is designed, but it's cooler up where my office is. So, Sydney, Aisha. Yeah, I am not ready for Friday. <laughs> you're in the middle of moving. Yeah, especially when you're in the mood. You know what I mean? It's almost like as soon as you take away the ability, you want it really bad. Libby, how's it going? Um, so everything sounds and looks okay, apparently. Hi, Aussie, how's it going? Welcome, I don't think I've seen you chat before. Welcome, welcome. It must be very early in the morning for you if you're actually in Australia. <laughs> but there, you're not alone. If so, Dolan's from uh, New Zealand, I think. So, um, and there's quite a few people Quite a few, in my opinion, just because I know how early it is for you. <laughs> so, um, all right. So the tropical shirt by Wardrobe by Me is, um, I would call this a straight up camp shirt um, for like the general like term of this shirt. Um, and I think it's called tropical shirt because it's also known sometimes as an aloha shirt or a Hawaiian shirt. So, um and I think there's actually specific things that are associated with Hawaiian shirts that I am not aware of, like to make them a specifically Hawaiian shirt. So I'm not trying to like make this into a Hawaiian shirt as well. As well so, oh no, Amanda, right? Yeah, I missed you too, Aisha. It's very early, yeah. 
it's like four or five in the morning, right? Or five, six, I think it's like six in the morning. I'm starting to learn your times. <laughs> Terry. Okay, I will, thanks. Malin's here too. <laughs> you know, this bunch, man, they're so crazy. Um, all right, so let's see. Okay, so here, I'm gonna be straight up with you guys. I'm really, really, really busy right now, but I, I, and usually this is not a streaming week for me, but I usually should have streamed last week and I didn't. And like I said, I really love sewing menswear. I really want to um, sew some this month and streaming is my, my first love. I just like to live stream because I like to be able to sew with you if you have questions, if you want to just hang out and talk about sewing. And I like showing a very realistic version of sewing, not the like little edited, tutorials because um, yeah that's great it took them 20 minutes to sew that but it took you four hours or eight hours to sew it and I, I like being more realistic about that I know that I'm pretty speedy but at the same time oh it's 2 a.m. oh my goodness <laughs> I'm way off so um, um, however I have quite a bit going on this week so if possible and you guys will let me and uh, once I get to sewing this, I might try and sew this whole thing today so that I don't stream tomorrow. So I know that that's kind of like, yay, a longer stream and boo, there's no stream tomorrow. But I have like, a lot of you know, I have two things, two like pants fitting presentations on Friday. And I just made my half pant form the other day and I really want more time to play around with her and cutting out a bunch of different types of pants. So. <clears throat> um, so let's, let's just try it out, right? So I could cheat and surge this and I could literally get this done lickety split. Um, but you know, I look at this one I made for my husband. I know the fabric's so dark, sorry. It'll be lighter, I promise, don't worry. The, the quality of the lighting is terrible right now, but uh, you yeah. know. Will we let you though? Exactly, <laughs> exactly. So this right here, you can see this fabric, it's got this nice little like, these little striations in the fabric. Here, I'll bring up the light a little bit more. Let's just bring up the light. We want it, at least for now. But I'm gonna put the pattern pieces on top of the fabric and it's gonna blow out the, the um, uh, why is that brightness not very bright right now? Ooh, okay. <laughs> I don't wanna hurt your eyes. All right, you see this? All right, so this is the uh, Fairfield Button Up by Thread Theory Designs, a short sleeve version um, that I made for my husband. It's not ironed or anything, it's, but you know, it's got a little contrast yoke in there and I put a hanger loop in there. Um, I think other than that, I sewed this straight up, but I was looking at this because I was using it as a guide for the fit of his tropical shirt. And he said, yeah, it's a little slim right now for him because he thinks he's a little bigger now and it's an inch too short. So I actually think that it's more likely that the fabric kept shrinking a little bit. Um, this is the seven berry fabric and it's kind of like a homespun hand woven, not hand woven, more like a homespun woven. Um, and I love this fabric line actually. If you ever see the seven berry fabrics, they're really nice quality. Um, in fact, the one I'm sewing today is a seven berry, but a completely different fabric type. But I'm getting to my point. I started looking at his shirt and I flat felled all of the seams and it looks so nice. So now I'm like, ooh, I feel really gross and cheaty if I surge his other birthday shirt. <laughs> so we'll see. I think I can do it. Honestly, it's really just double sewing this seam and this seam. That's it. That's all that it adds. And the placket's way easier in those facing. We got this. All right. So um, anyway, this was the Fairfield button up. And then the one I'm making today is not, a, it's a camp style shirt. So what that means is the sleeve will be more dropped right here. The armhole will be more dropped, the cap shorter. So it'll be a little more relaxed fit through the um, shoulder. And then the way that the collar is sewn on a camp style shirt is that the front has a facing. So the placket style that you sew is a facing, which is really easy. So 
You know, when something gets really easy, it means one thing probably gets a little harder, and that is finishing the neck edge on this one. But I have a backup plan for you if you really don't like having clean finish that area between the shoulders. So I'll get that to that too. All right, so let me show you my fabric right now that I'm using so that um, you can see what it looks like. So it's got these little dragonflies all over it. I can't see the cam the, the screen. Um, and it's more uh, like a um, poplin. I, yeah, I would say this is more along the lines of a poplin. So it's more of like a garment quality quilting cotton. <laughs> anyway. Okay, okay, let me, let me. Yeah, right, Sydney, there's something about the fabric that's really nice. I'm not sure, Libby. I, I would think that, that that particular one, I don't know if you can see the texture of this fabric in the camera. Not really. This is a looser weave. It looks more like a linen when you look at the, the fabric. This fabric actually 100% fooled me because you see those little lines on it? I thought that this was a, a yarn dyed woven and that's printed on there. That is printed on, because look at the back, solid. And I got this at my local fabric store. Um, and I got this one from Warp and Weft Textiles, which is a um, fabric store. And she specializes in fabrics like, like the Seven Berry fabrics and 100% um, cotton or 100% natural fiber. She even has hemp on there um, and a lot of yarn dyed woven. She doesn't have a huge catalog because she specializes in these. Um, and when I asked her, I was like, so why, what is this, this dragonfly? What, what texture is it? And that, and that's why, you know, cause I liked the dragonfly and I knew my husband would be really down for this. So anywho, let's get going. I'm like, I'm going to sew this whole thing and I haven't cut anything yet. So no, I, right. Aisha, such a good point. <laughs> such a good point. I know, but you know what? Like, I feel like it wears better and it lasts longer in the laundry. The overlock, I mean, it's so ironic that the overlock we feel like, oh, I needed a serger to kind of up my sewing game, right? And we put all this pressure on ourselves to kind of keep up with the sewing world and our sewing machines. But if you've been here since I started, you know that I hardly ever used my serger and um, I rarely used my cover stitch. Um, and I even sewed knits with my single needle, even though I had the serger. And so I don't really believe you have to have all those fancy machines. They're nice because they're fast, but you know, the serger, you can snag the threads in the laundry or just wearing them. And, um, and they just look a little messier over time. So yeah, Libby. Yeah. You so you sewed a shift from a super light linen. Oh, oh, that does not hand felling linen that's shredding dang you uh you impress me <laughs> you just bought the finch button-up shirt pattern from common stitch to make my boyfriend a shirt Does anyone have no is that a new one rebecca he doesn't care until the point out to me and then i see it <laughs> right jim <laughs> the less they know <laughs> exactly but you know, if you're like, I really want this serger as a gift because it'll make my sewing nice and your family's like, well, let's buy them a serger. I'm totally down for that too. <laughs> yeah, I, right, Aisha? I have totally been in that camp. So I've definitely, I've been sewing a very long time. I've been sewing since I was like probably 14 years old and really hardcore sewing since I was I don't know, 18 or 19. I've been sewing all my life. Like there's only been a few stints where I couldn't sew as much. Um, and that was really because I was working on a farm. <laughs> and then I was sewing, doing alterations on my one day off to get extra money because I was so broke there. But um, I have gone through so many phases in my sewing and I think they're all 100% valid. And I, cause I think they all add to your sewing experience and your um, skill repertoire and there was a long time where it was my job to draft patterns in the garment industry and I would sew the prototypes to make them look factory made. Factories don't flat fell and, and French seam 
It's very rare, especially American factories. Not anymore. They did when I graduated from high school. But so that when, when the serger and overlock and all that kind of came out and even, and even was in like ready to wear clothing, we all got very wowed by that and we want our clothes to look like that. And there's a, that is so, that is so totally fine, you know? So yeah, we aim here for couture. We do not aim for couture made. Shut your mouth, Michelle. <laughs> yeah, it does look professional compared to zigzag finish. <laughs> you got your surgery for someone for 300. Wow. All right, let's get going here. Yeah, so I, I totally, and sometimes like, like when I'm underwear making, I go for stretchy, right? I don't really care how they're finished. I go for stretchy. <laughs> But the way I like them to look, I'm sorry, I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn down the brightness, sorry. Um, the way I like them to look is surged and cover stitched, but the way they look better is totally homemade looking, which is surge and, um, surge and uh, zigzag, right? We did, I did a video about it, so. Yeah, exactly, Marlon. You know, and sometimes what I like about overlocking is um, how tidy and um, small the seam finishes are. Oh, okay, I wanna do one change to this. Here's the rub. If I flat fell um, or um, do any kind of French seaming or flat felling, either one, the seam allowances on this pattern are only three eighths of an inch. Three eighths, if you're an American, three eighths of an inch. So uh, one centimeter. So you need extra unless you're wanting to make the shirt a little bit smaller. And so I'm gonna add like a quarter of an inch to the armhole side seam, armhole side seam. I think that's all I have to do. I'm not worried about the yoke, oh, oh, oh. I take that back. And the underarm of the sleeve and the cap of the sleeve. So those are my points that I need to add the seam allowance. But I'm, right now I'm gonna shorten this shirt because I, what I did, Okay, I need to, <sighs> I can't keep up the pace of my talking. So, um, you don't think the finch button is a new pattern? Oh, okay, big enough to fit. Oh, nice. Yeah, I, that is one thing. I love the wardrobe by me patterns, but for menswear, they do run a little bit small. Just be aware of that. Like, the, I'm cut out the large for my husband. If you've seen me and my husband next to each other, I'm bigger than my husband. So. Um, that gives you a really good idea that these are a little bit on the small side, so. I, well, yeah, overlocking is great. Yeah, I don't know why. I think it's because I'm still on my, like, second cup of coffee. <laughs> and I'm excited. I'm really excited. All right, so I'm gonna, um, just gonna do this kind of quick and dirty. So I, what I did was I measured my husband's shirt, the Fairfield, and I laid it on top of this one, lining up all the spots. And he wants that one to be one inch longer. So I took that into consideration. So I just need to shorten this a little bit. It looks really long to me, which kind of surprises me, but um, I'm gonna keep a little bit extra just so it can kind of keep shrinking a little bit. I can always make it shorter on him, right? There's only a three quarter inch hem allowance. Uh, so there wasn't much there. I'm excited to be streaming. I'm juggling so many different things right now. It's almost comical. Cause I love all of them. Like I'm managing all the content for the skill building session for fitting pants, I'm trying to answer questions in the guild and like kind of keep an eye on it. But I have to admit, I have had to shut it so that I'm not always doing that. Cause then I never get back to what I'm doing. Like I can't spend like a long stint of time doing what I'm doing. And then um, yesterday I edited two videos to make that half pant form. And while that is in some ways kind of a, kind of a side thing because nobody asked for that video and, and I think it's gonna get really low views. 
it feels like for me, that kind of thing feels good when I'm like, I am giving you this idea for a tool that might help you in your sewing. You don't have to watch it, but hey, you know, it kind of helps wrap your head around it. So, all right. So I think the last thing I want to do is I'm going to add a big fat red line. <laughs> Because who here thinks Ceramy's gonna accidentally cut off the extra paper she adds <laughs> for the seam allowance? I'm just gonna get a little piece of paper here. Hi, Nancy. Nello. It could it could be, um, but it, it could be Libby that she. Uh, is also a fan of making them look um, factory made because that that would definitely be a hangover from the industry days. It's kind of interesting when you when you are trying to make prototypes because I had to make my prototypes like proto by prototypes I mean like when I did um, pattern drafting as a freelancer. So I wasn't attached to any one company. I would draft the patterns. And then at the very end, like when we were really close, I would make prototypes and then they would be able to go to a factory, like show up with the pattern and the prototype. And then because the prototype looked factory made, they were more likely to get their foot in the door because they had professional patterns and they had a professional sample. So it was like one of the things where the factory would be like, oh, okay, this person's gonna be okay to deal with, right? We're not gonna have to teach this person how to do this. And so it was really surprising what it took to make my samples look professional like that. And they, there was a little bit of wiggle room because not every serger looks the same, not every cover stitch, not every anything. And then sometimes, you know, factories would be like, oh, we don't, you know, do this stitch. Can we do this differently, you know? But it was a lot simpler than you think. And I actually kind of relished in it, <laughs> you know, so. Oh. Terry, I have a, um, I have a, I need to show you a project. I don't know when I'll see you the, the next um, workshop, but um, if you, if I see you at a workshop sometime soon, say, what was it that you want to show me, Sarami? Because uh, there's a pattern coming out soon I think you're going to like that I know about. <laughs> I'm recording the video, the how-to video for it. And it is men's. Uh, my sister just left her. Oh, the half pound from a super. You've never seen anything like. Yeah, yeah, they did. I know. I saw that too. <laughs> yeah, huge seam allowances. Let me cut off the seam allowances. I think it's really funny though, Shim, because for years. I was in the camp of Aisha's friend, you know, where I'm like, I just want this to look factory made and I, these five eighths inch seam allowances are really getting in the way, <laughs> you know? Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, they're very common in Europe, exactly. Exactly. It is easy to say one centimeter, isn't it? All right, so I'm just adding a quarter of an inch to the periphery. And um, before you say, can't you just do that while you're cutting it out? You absolutely could, but I apparently can't. How many times have we all seen me go, I'm just gonna add this while I cut it out. And then the very first thing I cut, I've already ruined it. I do things like this too. I block out the little edge right here because this is the way I look at it. I got, you get really good at this kind of thing when you have done a lot of rotary knife cutting. I know that when I cut, always the pattern is to the left of my blade. If I were left-handed, it would be to the right of my blade, but I'm right-handed, so the pattern is always to the inside so that the blade, not the backside, but the blade of the inside of the rotary knife is to the pattern, right? 
I'm just stressing this so you understand because people are going to say, there's bone science in the blade, but it's, I'm talking about this, the side you can see. So because I know I'm going to go around this counterclockwise, I know that that's right there where I'm going to turn the corner. This is the perfect spot. And this is usually always where I mess up when I'm cutting out the fabric. And then I'll go up the shorter one. So if I do this little thing where I'm like, nope, don't turn there, that's kind of my indication. I don't really need it here. I need it, and I don't need it there, but I just do it anyway. And on this one, let's do this one and then we're ready to cut out. Okay. Oh yeah, that's extra paper there. I, I'm really excited about this half pant form. <clears throat> and if you're wondering what I'm talking about, um, I, I posted it on my my Instagram and then it's also on the community tab here on YouTube. I posted a little picture of it. I think I, what I'm worried about is it's almost so literal. It's hard to see what you're seeing. You know, like it's hard to understand that that is actually my, my cross section. You know what I mean? So... I'm hoping it actually is helpful. I don't wanna to add to the confusion. You know, I was reading the directions for this. Oh, there is a little mark right there. How I not saw that mark when I was looking at this earlier. All right, let's cut it out. All right, so I've cut out the large for my husband. Um, in fact, I took his measurements today and um, I really, I wanna look at the um, size chart. Yeah, I totally agree, the wasteful thing. In fact, Walter, hi, how are you? I act like Walter's like a rock star, he kinda is, but I miss seeing you. I hope you're well. Um, yeah, when I'm really low on fabric and there's five eighths inch seams, and that's the first thing that goes. I trim it way down because you can really, you can recover almost two inches in width across your fabric by overlapping all your seam allowances. Yeah, exactly, Libby. And so when at the workshop this afternoon, I have a few fabrics pulled out. I'm gonna ask you guys what looks the best on camera. I totally agree. I, I think it's a great idea. So, all right, let's look at his, his chest is 32 and a half. Two and a half. I don't believe that the chest is 44 on this. I think it's just like a want for a lot of seam uh, uh, ease. Oh my God. <laughs> you know, Malin, I was thinking it should just be jelly bean. Fabric look like jelly beans because that's what my crotch curve looks like, right? <laughs> All right, so his chest is a 32 and a half, his waist is 34 and a half, and the chest on the, um, th that would mean I would probably cut the small. There's no way. I'm, I cut out the large. I hope that is okay. I'm rethinking life right now. But if I put this, um, if he says this is a little too small, and I put this on here. There's a lot of ease on this too. If I put this on here, you know, I have to line the placket up on the notch. It's only five eighths of an inch bigger. And that's why I added the, so I'm gonna add this because if I did a five eighths inch seam allowance, I'm only giving him this much extra, which is like two inches total, kind of a bit. Maybe I shouldn't, but he said he would like a little bit more. It'll be fine. You're just busy non-crafting things. Nice, well, it's summer. How'd your greenhouse come in? Okay. Let's do this. All right, I'm gonna brighten it up. Well, I'm probably not gonna brighten it up. I just folded my fabric. I didn't realize that I didn't have it folded correctly. I usually fold it right out of the dryer, you know? 
Why is there a wrinkle there? Look at that big old wrinkle there. Probably can't see that. Let's get rid of this. Let me smooth it out a little bit. All right. Let me get all my pattern pieces out of the way. Oh, I need to shorten this facing right here as well. Oh, there's a bunch of goo on my scissors. What was that from? What was I just doing? I'm going to say, oh, YouTube more money by doing that because there's just no way. It wouldn't even be a penny. <laughs> it wouldn't even be a penny and it would just make some people mad and leave. <laughs> His chest is 32 and a half. Anna, Anna, I was just about to um, send you a message and see how you're doing. I did, haven't seen you in the guild in a bit. Not that I creep on y'all, but you know. I sometimes, when people are there a lot and I see people a lot, I am one of those people that then I'm like, I haven't seen them in a bit, I have to check on them. Oh, nine, oh, 87, yeah. Yeah, well, you know what, Libby? Who's to say it's not on Spoonflower already? You know, like, I, what if I took like a picture, an anatomy cross-section picture and blew it up or even just like redrew it and procreate? But I think that that would be a little bit too <laughs> realistic. I know, Shem, that's what I'm worried about now. But the thing is, like when I lay his shirt on here, and he says it's a little bit tight. I, I like, I pinned this whole thing. I pinned the yoke to the shoulder, the yoke to the back. I folded it, li lined up the side seam at the armhole. This really isn't that much smaller. Let's measure this. I'm pretty sure I cut out the, the um, large. Yeah, so that's right there is, 21 yes yeah, so that's that's 21 there's a pleat on the back here this this pen just doesn't work it just doesn't work like no no amount of like you know trying it is gonna change that so this it has a little bit of a pleat so we'll take out like you know a little bit for that so that's 24, and what I say this was 21. So yeah, I mean it is almost 44. It's more than 10 inches. It is, right, Michelle? Exactly. <laughs> right, Anna. The kids are home. <clears throat> All right. Yeah, this the little thing from YouTube needs to go away. I literally can just click a button, you guys, that says insert ad. Oh my gosh. All right, Shem's making me rethink everything here. So if I measure this, let's measure this around. Maybe I shouldn't trust him on uh, when he says it's a little close fitting. Maybe it's another fit issue he's having, which is very likely because his shoulders are a really interesting shape. 18. So 21, 42, I mean, yeah, so 18, 20 and a half. This is 41 inches across him and he says it's really slim. I'm only saying making it like too big. Maybe I should just stick with the original. I am sticking with the original size, actually. Shoot, I wish I would have made him try this on. Hmm. I think so, trust the large, thank you guys. Okay, I'm gonna trust the large, all right, yeah. 
I can always make it smaller. But then I'm like, oh, maybe I should have used the serger. <laughs> I'd rather unpick serging than flat fell. Would I though? I don't know. Would I though? <laughs> Okay, so let's, um, we commit here. We commit on this channel. <laughs> I uh, sew the way I play video games. I just run in there like I have a thousand health. <laughs> but I don't get shot down in sewing, so. Yeah, that's my experience too, Shim. I've made a lot of the wardrobe by me patterns for him and the large seems to be the one. Yeah, right, Michelle, exactly. Okay. He didn't say where the tightness was, but now I'm gonna try it on him. Sorry, my nose is really itchy. Blah, blah, blah. All right, I think I have plenty of fabric, but let's, this is my test. I'm gonna fold this over. Oh yeah, we have plenty of fabric. I just ordered my fabric for next week's stream this morning. <laughs> I'm not slacking, I promise, but shoot. Come in. Mm. Yeah, all right. All right, and the other thing is I may need to change the blade of my uh, rotary knife because I can't remember if I did it after I discovered it had a funny little thing in it. We're not talking about making something too small for him either. You know, if anything, it's too big. My only hesitation is the sleeve armhole thing, just like what you've been dealing with, Shem. I don't want it to be too big because I can't bring it up when it's too big. You know, that's the irony. You can't really make an armhole smaller without pu pulling apart the shoulder collar, all of it. Yeah, I'm hoping, Michelle. Nee. Hi, Martina. How's it going? All right, let's uh, notch this little pleat here. I'm gonna notch my center back right there. I just go across. And there's a lot of uh, notches here, but I'm just gonna do this one here. I don't really need that one. I don't need that one. And I know this is the back, so I'm just gonna skip all those. I'm just gonna skip those mainly because when I'm doing flat felled or French seams and I have a lot of notches in there, um, it makes it so that the notch is showing on the inside, you know, so. Ooh, I need, oh no, I have one of these already started. Here we go. Oh, one thing I noticed with this, I'm gonna let her know because I'll bet she didn't realize. Uh, I printed the layers out of this. So there's layers on this and you can unclick all of the other sizes. Um, and I didn't tell you what size this goes up to. I should tell you that and down to. But uh, when you toggle everything off at the large, this pocket interfacing piece, the line didn't show up for it. <laughs> so I don't really need that, but I'm gonna let her know. Just a funny thing, probably no one's done, or if they did, there's like so few people who've done that, and so, and then, you know, we forget to say something to the person. I'm just looking, I'm just doing the eyeball uh, grain line. <laughs> you can do chalk, uh, Shem. You can do something uh, visible, you know, like a chalk, um, and, um, the, the little notches that point to the outside, you know, meaning like do a little triangle right here that sticks out. Oh yeah, I mostly use antique, oh, this is not the cutting line. That's hilarious. I use, mostly use antique irons just cause they're easy to find, you know, and they work so good. And I don't have to pay shipping on something so heavy. Uh, I, wait, what did Michelle ask me? The printer, my printer is a HP printer and there's this weird quirk with HP printers and pattern pieces that makes the lines show up as a series, the curves show up as a series of straight lines. So you see this, look at straight, 
straight, straight. So it's basically like a connect the dot of making the curve. Um, what did you ask, Michelle? Did you notch the armhole for, uh, I don't need to. All I need for the notch for the sleeve, for putting the sleeve is knowing on the sleeve itself what the front and the back is. But I know that's the back because it has the yoke going to it and the top part's cut off of that back piece. So I, I, I know that that's the back. And so I don't really need that double notch. I kind of know where to stop my easing stitch. Oh, that's awesome, Terry. It doesn't, it doesn't do the curve or it does. You don't have that? You don't have that? Really? Maybe I need to figure out which one everyone's using when I need a new printer because um, I see this a lot in um, uh, forums. So I know it's not me, just me. Like I didn't even know this was a thing until I, I saw that in a forum and I was like, oh. <laughs> I think I saw it in the five out of four patterns group actually. All right, so can I use this for anything useful? <laughs> so we have our, this one has a bias under collar um, and it has a um, length of grain top collar. I could put the yoke right here on the um, cross grain. And you know what? I'm going to. <laughs> I can do whatever I want. And it'll actually give more ease because there's, well, actually, no. No, that would actually do the opposite. Hmm. Do I want that? Let me think about that. Because going across the fabric like this, across grain or, you know, perpendicular to the fold or selvage, there is a little bit of give in wovens. And in the length grain, there isn't. So if I do it like that, this is why some collars or some pieces, like waistbands, collars, and yokes, it is kind of important on what grain line you put it on. Um, so yeah. But you know, you, you, like she has a bias grain line if you're gonna do a plaid. Now, if you're doing that, it's really cute, but I will say, don't wait forever to sew your shirt. If you cut this in on the bias, same with your pocket, because it's going to have a little party while you're not looking and you're going to be like, what, why is this line or this edge a half inch longer than that line? Because that's what happens with it. I already cut the facing. No, what I should have done, Shim, is moved the back, the fabric over and made a bigger, wider piece over there. And then put it on the fold. Maybe it is a newer issue. You have HP. Okay, fine, none of your HPs do that. It's not in my head though, I promise. <laughs> this is not making me feel like I'm wrong. <laughs> um, mm. You know what? I just don't want to lose the fabric, so I'm going to put this on the cross grain. I just want to use it all up, you know? Is there two? There's only w one pocket. That's okay. But could I get this here? I could get this here. I could get this a little bit off grain like that. That's what I'll do. So uh, when you have a bias grain line, anything off grain is bias. So if you want true bias, you would put this perfectly parallel to the selvage, right? <clears throat> and you can go this way, like put this on the cross grain too, and that would still be bias. So anything off grain is gonna be bias. So I'm just gonna fit this in here and that'll be enough. No, there it is. Printers are jerks. Exactly. Newton, <laughs> right, Sydney? 
You made you made your one pair though. Like you finished a whole pair of Tanya's, right? I thought we made those kind of at the same time. Cause I remember you had just finished kind of when I met you here in the stream and you, you said, oh, I'm dreading that hem. And I was like, it's not that bad. And I remember when you finally got to it, you were like, you're right, it wasn't that bad. Cause I was dreading it too. Hemming it's more of a pain than anything. <laughs> yeah, those Tanya culottes, they might have a life of their own now. I love this kind of sewing, this kind of um, garment. This is totally my happy place. Wovens, structure. Oof, love it. Okay, separating out my fabric from my paper down there. Okay, let's do our notches. Trying to do really tiny ones, but this right here isn't a French seam. So it'll be fine. I don't really need this pattern piece either. And I think I left my piece on my collar. We still need a pocket. We don't need this piece either. Oh, I need to do interfacing of that. You had a second pair cut out. She's been into workout clothes, that's why. <laughs> and wine tasting. Don't you like tasting wine, is that what it is? I think I've seen you post about that. <laughs> Same reason, yeah. <laughs> I, I, when I hear things like that, <laughs> I think there's some reason I think Malin pops into my head too about this. Um, it's like, I just want all of everybody's unfinished piles. <laughs> like, <laughs> give it to me. <laughs> it's terrible. It's a sickness. Okay. That was a little awkward so far away from me right here. All right, uh, what do we need? We need this one right here. I don't know, I don't need that one, I don't need that. Uh, we need our placket notch here at the top and don't really need one down here. Yeah, that's all, that's all I need. Yeah, I think that's what it is. I think that's why you popped into my head. <laughs> You'll start all the way like and finish them. Eek. <laughs> Imagine. Sometimes we think we like talk about like if we could start a, a business up here, because you know this whole community is rebuilding, right? We always think like what would be the most useful thing to the community? You know, like what would people actually use? Because it has to be something really useful, since most people go somewhere else to work, right? So they leave every day, go somewhere to work. So they could just shop or do whatever in those other bigger communities, right? So you'd have to have something here that people want. And anytime I ever think of anything, I'm always like, and hey, maybe I could do alterations there. I don't know why I have that thought because you know, I don't wanna do that really. But it is that kind of thing of like, knowing people have things that don't fit them. And they're just sitting there waiting. <laughs> okay, so we need a collar. I can just pull one layer of fabric out right there. We need our two sleeves. Are you in the guild, Amanda? You can come in there and you can say, I'm stuck on this, what do I do? <laughs> Perfect place for something like that. We, uh, I think, I think twice now I've had a, um, and you know, it's Walt, I don't know if Walter's still here, but Walter totally inspired me to do it. What's it called? What was it called, Libby? What, what's the, um, what's Walter, what's your term for, for like finishing projects? 
Walter did this thing where he spent all of one whole year finishing every unfinished project. And um, I actually really enjoyed the journey and it inspired me too because I remember at the end he was at the he was kind of on the mindset of he's like, you know what, I'm really glad I finished everything, but um, I don't think I'd ever do that again. Like now he gave himself permission to have unfinished things. So, oh yeah, check it out, sosoguild.com. It's free to join. There's a it's a community. All these lovely people are in there. Um, and yeah, you can post your makes, your questions. Someone's always always awake. <laughs> Finish it February and finish it Friday. FFO, finally finished objects. Exactly. So right here, Shem, like this is a good example. Like this notch, I kind of need these notches on the sleeve. So what I could have done is done a little like triangle poking out like old school home, home sewing uh, big four patterns do. So I could do that. I could do chalk. Yeah, finally finished objects, <laughs> FFO. And so um, I think I did like a whole week devoted to that. It was great. I, I, I always end up having some things that I need to still finish. Whoops, hey Ray, how's it going? We do have fun, it's just totally different. If you're not into social media, but you still wanna be able to like say, look what I made and someone's actually gonna be like, oh, that's awesome, That's you should come there. It's, there's no ads, it's all private. It's very cool. Okay, we just need interfacing for the facing and then one collar here. It's just sewing on the buttons for you, Sydney. That's funny. Um, I just wanna look through my scraps. There's no way any of these would work, right? I like to make questionable grain line choices when I'm faced with using my scraps. Okay, we're just gonna um, unfold this and do one collar. It's gonna line up the selvage to the fold line. But don't get it to torque, get it actually on grain. There we go. And then we'll cut one of these out. So usually all collars, collar stands, I like quarter inch seams, but these are three eighths and, and that's, that's okay. It's why I'm not cutting it down because um, if it were five eighths, I would cut it down. And I think that this is the, is that really the shoulder? Huh. Okay. I'm curious about this now. All right, I'm just gonna notch the center. Huh. I don't think this is the kind of collar I think it is. This is not a notched collar, is it? Right? Hey, hey, Shasha, how's it going? Welcome! Nice. Yeah, everyone's pretty awesome here. We like sewing. You went to the quilt store, Ray? That's awesome. <laughs> Elena. Hi. <laughs> Questionable grain line choice of the vlog name. <laughs> What's the, huh? Oh, the, you caught on to that, did you? Uh, the huh right now is that the collar point, if this is the collar point that turns down like this, it's really uh, narrow. And so if this is around the neck, Right, and then you, you fold this, it has to fold down at center back and it's going around the person like this. 
it's just not very, usually this goes out. Usually it's like this, not in. Yeah, don't count. Yeah, knitting UFOs, is it's, it's, it's like its own thing. Oh, I need a pocket, don't I? Well, shiver me timbers. All right, let's do that. Uh, how about right here in this little juicy piece that's hanging down in the center waiting for a pocket? There's my fold right there. You probably cannot see the fold at all. It looks like I'm just cutting into the abyss, doesn't it? <laughs> oh, I need to put my pocket markings on the front shirt. I love how I was like, I don't need any of that. And then I just shoved it into the envelope, but I do need the, the pocket markings. All right. <laughs> nice. Yeah, I'm sorry. It's really dark. It'll be better, I think, under the machine lighting. Can't even see my little dragonflies right now. <laughs> it is kind of dark. Which one was this front? This is it right here. And then this is the front. So let's transfer the pocket notch pocket notches which is actually just these um, lines right here it's probably how I, why I missed them all right I like doing it like this where I just fold it down like that line it all up like that I only have the wax crayon over here, which I don't trust that thing. It's also probably older than me. <clears throat> but I love it. <laughs> There's no bottom for the um, pocket. So we'll just have to make sure we get it parallel to center front. No, it's the seven berry spoon uh, poplin that I was talking about. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I blew out the cameras early on to kind of show what it looked like when I was showing the fit of that um, Fairfield I have sitting here. The fabric top, yeah, it's the seven berry fabric. Um, I got from Warp and Weft Textiles. If you look them up, their website is Warp and the plus sign Weft Textiles. They're not the only ones that, that carry it, but she does have a really good selection of fabrics like that. I'm really having a struggle with the um, ye old interfacing lately. So I'm not sure I have a black fabric. This is fusible woven. <sighs> I mean, this is my favorite right now. I'm so tempted to use it, you know, but it's definitely not wide enough. I'm mad about the interfacing right now. Yeah, me too, Elena. So I like, I have his other shirt here, which I won't even show you because it's like, it's also dark. You can't see anything. And um, it is like their, their homespun fabric. And then this one is more like a smooth poplin. I think this stuff works better than the white, but I'm still having issues with it because I used it on my pant form. I was like, let's get rid of some of this and let's see if the black is as bad as the white. And it kind of is, you know, what are you going to do? The great panini ruined our interfacing. Oh, 
I mean, I would just use fabric. I could just use fabric, you know? Oh, shoot, Elena. Yeah, right, Amanda. You know what? I like fabric. <laughs> I just like fabric. I mean, you know, it just works. And interfacing is kind of a relatively new invention. I'm just going to use fabric. I feel safer with it. It does use the fabric though, you know, like in some ways I'm like, oh, <laughs> I like having this big uh, remnant. I don't usually like having remnants though. Okay, so let's you keep the piece as big as possible by uh, refolding this end here. And uh, we'll just cut it. Okay. Yeah, my uh, internet struggles, or internet, um, I actually don't have internet struggles now, I'm happy to say. Um, my uh, interfacing struggles lately are, they're, they make me kind of grouchy. <laughs> if you can't rely on interfacing, I feel like the world is completely in a shambles. The sewing world, that is, you know. And definitely something changed interfacing. I, I never really liked using fusible interfacing to begin with. And this just makes me want to retreat back into it even more. This will leave an even bigger piece. So we're going to use fabric. It's a very narrow facing at the shoulder. If I'm not using the serger overlock, um, finishing this edge, I should have added a little bit to it. You know what, I actually still can. I'm gonna move this over <laughs> like this. Whoa, what's happening to the camera? Whoa, what was that? What was that? I'm just going to make it uh, like a quarter inch bigger so that I can turn under the edge. Is it doing it again? What was that? Disco party without the party. I haven't seen something like that since I tried sewing something like um, gingham. Did it twice so far? All right, well, let's leave this camera. Bye. Oh, wait, I need interfacing for the collar too. <laughs> now I feel like I have to hurry. <laughs> I think I do have one backup camera I saw in my, my bin of stuff. Um, just looking for some interfacing. Wait, I don't want to lose my pattern pieces. That's my pattern piece, right? Yeah, yeah, okay. Just twice, right? No, it's not a loose cord connection, I don't think. I don't think that's it. Sometimes the camera has a lot of trouble, like on plaids and things, locking onto the fabric. So it's why you don't, like when I'm um, doing sponsored things, I'm always like, okay, I have to approve the fabric. And I always tell them, it's not because I care about what you're sending, it's the cameras. Because if it's a small plaid or stripes or lines like that, the camera can't handle it. And it tries to focus on it and then it does something like that. So it might be having trouble discerning the darkness against the details. All right. Okay, we're ready to sew now. We don't need to interface anything with the iron because we don't trust interfacing anymore. Our faith has been shaken. <laughs> I know, right, Shim? 
I was, uh, it happens to me all the time because I usually spend time like a few weeks before a stream to kind of check in now. I've gotten good at it, but I definitely get a little cavalier when I was cutting. Okay, yeah. All right, so we're going to move to the machine now. So I'm going to move the face cam over there, and I think I already got the lighting okay. So we just need to, let me turn this light off over here. I'm always trying to conserve these crazy weird bulbs. Water, mouse keyboard. Fifty people here? Well, hello. Um, it's roughly in the right spot. Oops, there we go. I'm gonna leave my light off for now. Oh, no, I'm not leaving my light off. We're probably really gonna need the light today, huh? I was just trying to keep it cool in here. Because for some reason, my office doesn't get the air conditioning. It's already 80. Oh. All right, let me go get the stuff. The goods. And let's turn on the iron, get it warmed up. My uh, pant fitting toolkit <laughs> for workshops and stuff. darkness from the details. <laughs> that sounds kind of ominous, honestly. <laughs> it's so philosophical. My husband's the philosopher, not me. I'm going to try and change the angle a little bit. I like it when it's looking like this. And I, I have some things planned. I am Shem. Be nice to do a contrast though, huh? Why didn't you say something earlier? <laughs> I know, like I did that on the, the other one I did for him. All right. All right, one thing I want to look at was the collar. Just because of that shape of that point. Oh, okay. Okay, that's fine. All right, let's do this. All right, so let's uh, prep our, let's get all our pieces ready. I kind of just chucked them into the bin. So we have our collar. Can you see the, the um, dragonflies a little bit? All the dragonflies have returned to our house. Here's the sleeves, put them in last. Yoke. Collar, under collar. Um, and they're, they're just so amazing. Like the first year we lived there, we had this like, this like millions of these big golden dragonflies and the little blue ones too. Yoke, back, front, back, uh, facing, pocket. Yoke back collar. There we go. I think that's kind of why you like the dragonfly print. You see that? It's subtle. It doesn't look like a batik. Like the camera kind of picks it up with the blues being a little bit um, like lower volume and uh, lighter. But they're they're very very uh, one color. And it's more of I would say a gray than a light blue. So. Yeah, well, because it's it's only 
two feet above Shem and the other one is probably four feet above. That's why. <laughs> Trouble discerning the darkness. My first novel. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, all right, let's go to the iron. Let's go to the iron. We'll get our pocket started here. I'm just gonna turn it down. See, I've come a long way with the streams. Now I pre-iron things. I would have never done this before. <laughs> Maybe that's all I'll do. I used to sew 100% like a factory uh, sewist. And um, <clears throat> I've definitely, I do less of that now because I don't have to, you know? All right, I'm gonna do the pocket. And then we're gonna put it on the front. Well, for a second there, I thought I marked the pocket on the back. That little thread made me think it was a um, pleat. Um, no, she doesn't have you do it that way. She has you do it where you sew it right sides together along the long edge. You fold it back and then turn it, but I don't really like doing it that way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, it's really cute fabric. I'll turn up the brightness. Let's turn up the brightness a little more. Just tell me if it gets too much. I know people will start zoning out and kind of just listening to me in the background, but if you can just kind of check, <laughs> make sure, you know, the lighting is okay. Because remember, this video lives forever on YouTube. Yeah, see? All right, so let's uh, center this on the pins here. And I'm just gonna pin it on one side and then um, I'll use my little ruler here. I'm just gonna see if I have a parallel line there. And then we'll know it's on straight. Like that. There's always five different ways to do it, right? Yeah, I don't know why. I, I think that way is cool and it works, but I just like doing it this way where I turn it upside down and then I um, start at the bottom of the hem and then I go up to the top and I use my awl to poke back this little thing right here. So we're looking at my pot, here's my pocket and it's turned back on itself. And so this little thing right here, this little turn back, I kind of grab it with my awl and push it down in there so that it doesn't peek out the top. So you can sew your pocket either way. Either one of them has an issue doing it. So now I'm gonna, now that it's secure down there, I kind of grab that little tuck, tuck or uh, turn back, <laughs> come up to the top and then sew across and then all the way around. So just some things here. Oh, I should have turned it before I kept going there. You can even fold around the perimeter and iron it first because that'll give you a nice little even edge. And when the pocket has a, a point like this, another strategy is, okay, I'm gonna find the center by folding it in half and making sure that you're kind of folding it at that center point so that your point isn't a little bit off, you know? On something this dark, it wouldn't really show but if you're doing this on like a lighter linen, you know, fabric, the linen's probably going to be a little bit more loosey goosey, you know, kind of open weave and um, giving you a hard time. So just making sure that you have it centered before you get there will be a really helpful. 
You gotta let it know who's boss, you know? Ooh, I'm barely on there. All right, cut the tail. Uh, okay, calm down, Sammy. And then I would go to the back and cut. All right. Yeah, right, Ray? Yeah, I, so yeah, I don't think anything's wrong with the way she has you do it uh, at all. Most, most, I feel like more often than not, a lot of the indie pattern companies, I see that. So it's totally fine. All right, so now we're gonna do the pleat on the back. I'm gonna just secure it first. My fabric could totally be ironed a little bit here. You see this little bit of a wrinkle? Let's just go iron it real quick. Why not? We've got a nice hot iron, right? It'll make taming this edge a little better. Because this was where the fabric was folded out of the laundry. Plus it'll just look nice as we sew it. <laughs> I like those things that make me feel good about my sewing as I go. All right, so let's move those out of the way. So when I do pleats like this, I kind of, I make sure the fabric is nice and flat. There's my center point right there. And then my pleat right here. And I try and make the pleat very parallel like that. See that? Boop. It's not being stitched down all the way, but if you were to just go like this, which is very common, right? This is the way I used to do it. You just go like this, right? Fold it over and then stitch it. What happens is this little edge can drop down from the top edge or it get, or the, the fold is a little bit uneven with the top edge. And even a little bit can kind of make your pleat, like one pleat will stick out from the body and the other one will be nice and flush. And I think that's where you can prevent that from happening. So I just make sure the pleat is pretty parallel when I go to stitch it down like this. And sometimes, like now, I do two rows like that just to secure it. And see in this one here, same thing. Like that. And you can kind of look at it and go, all right, is this gonna hang nice and flat from the body? That, that pleat's so far apart. It looks big. All right, so I don't do the burrito method. Nothing against it, I just don't do it that way. It's, I just, that came out way after I learned how to sew a yoke. <laughs> My first one, I'm gonna do just the regular old sandwich or sandwich. Line up my edges. And then same thing with this pleat. The pleat kind of kind of bullies the edge, right? It kind of wants to drop down. So just make sure that you have it lined up. And then once I get it all lined up, I'm gonna pull it to the edge. I'm so much more particular about these little pleats nowadays. Center to the center. And see my cent this this feels a little bigger. Makes me want to pleat that a little bit more. Hmm. I'm gonna pleat it a little bit more. And keep the center on the center. I, I don't want to stretch it, you know? Now I'm regretting the double stitch, especially since I can't see it. <laughs> Man, can you guys, you can probably see it better than I can. I really need to fix this whole frame here. One of these days it's gonna fall down.
the camera's kind of in my face, but it's a little better. Oh, yeah, really? You like that one? Hi, Kelly. Oh, nice. I have Kelly. It's in the menswear playlist, but I can't remember how search works on YouTube. You can always just go to my website. And um, it's not a ploy to get you, there's nothing on my website, like, it's not, it's not a ploy. But I organize all my projects on my website, and so, which is um, so -so live. And if you search in that search bar, cargo short, men's cargo shorts or cargo shorts, they should come up. And then in that is all the links to all the videos and my notes about it. Like, um, what I would do differently, what I liked, didn't like. Things like that. All right, I'm going to line up the center right here like this and then pleat this again. In fact, I'm going to move the pleat over a little bit even. That's what you do sometimes if you just can't get it to match. I'm going to, yeah, there we go. Like this. And then make sure it's still straight. I, my husband loves those cargo shorts, by the way. I think on that one, it's important to get the sizing right because it doesn't have a traditional waistband. And in fact, Kelly, um, I think that one might have a note because I sew the fly incorrectly at first and I have to go back. And I think there's a note somewhere that says, Make sure you watch Sarami fix this before you sew this right here so that you don't make the same mistake. And it was just, it was a pretty easy mistake to make. Let me make it for you. <laughs> but they're, they're, those are some of my husband's favorite shorts. They're just a little big around the waist and that's not an easy one to fix because it's like a, it's a waist facing rather than a waistband. So... I think, um, and the, I made their chinos as well. He doesn't wear those as often because they're a little dressier. But those fit him really nice. I would argue those are some of the nicest fitting pants I've made him. But it's not like the style he wears usually. I just did all that talk on getting your pleat right on, the, um, on this, and then I had to take it out. <laughs> so I'm just finding where this fullness is. Not sure why it didn't match up. There we go. All right, let's press this. Was I think so, Shem? But I think that it was my mistake. Oh, how fun! He doesn't use back pockets. You've made this shirt a number of times. I mean, he absolutely loves them. Oh, yeah. That's awesome, Shasha. Um, where is he at on the size shirt? Well, Kelly, you know, this is your opportunity. You know, you don't have to clue him in on that. You, I don't know if you've been here long enough to hear my story about working for someone. I worked at this place, and the um, owner, you know, had been around for, at that point, I was there for their 40th anniversary. And the owner still thought he was a medium. <laughs> he had started the company the year I was born. Let's put it that way. So um, we were, as the, the design department, we were having trouble getting some of our latest designs, like the pattern drafting, approved because they weren't fitting him. <laughs> and we couldn't tell, like marketing and sales was getting a little bit miffed with us. And we were just like, trust us, it's... It's all going to, it's fine, but, you know, like, we, and they didn't understand why that it wasn't getting approved because we couldn't tell them, well, the boss doesn't know he's actually a large now and he's unwilling to admit it. You know, you can't just say that to all the employees, you know what I mean? So, um, <laughs> me and the other designer decided... And she'd been there longer than me. She was, I think, 20 years older than me, too. A wonderful person. Um, 
we decided that what we were going to do, because we had tried everything to clue him in on what size he was, we were like, oh, that's interesting. Well, let's measure you and then let's measure the pant. <laughs> um, stuff like that. And he just didn't ever, it never clicked that we were just like, oh, look at your waist here. And on the size chart, it says straight up denial. <laughs> Long time viewer, first time live. <laughs> and um, so we just changed the size tag in the samples to a medium and it worked but trust me keeping up that ruse that was one of the hardest ruses because we'd just be like uh hey uh shipping department let us know if uh the boss is ever buying some clothes off the out of, off the racks here <laughs> oh man all right so we now we have our yoke is this bright enough for you guys? You want it brighter? We can go brighter. Just a little bit. Just a little. A little I don't want to, you know, burn your eyeballs. A little too much? Let's try that. All right, so we have our yoke on here. All right, now we're gonna do the fronts, right? So this is my non-burrito method. We call it the taco method around here. Exactly, Kelly. Vanity sizing, not just for the gals. All right, so I always line up my, my uh, shirt right sides together, and then I just pick up one layer. See the yoke, is, this is the under yoke, this is the um, top yoke, and this is the front. Doesn't matter if you start at the neck or the shoulder. And then I just flip it right sides together. And then I sew. You can't really pin this method first. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. It's always things like this that when my, um, my needle comes unthreaded. Maybe, is the sewing fairy trying to tell me something? Not too bright? Okay. <laughs> Are you guys serious? <laughs> Let's at least do this. Everybody's into dark mode and I'm, he I'm here like shining the brightness of a thousand suns in your eyes. Okay. Yeah, and then I just, uh, once I have it under the machine like this, like, and I've sewn a little bit, I, and then I just straighten out every layer. So here's my bottom layer, which is the top yoke. Here's my front, line it up, and it's the next one that's gonna be the hard one, right, because it's the one folding over the edges, and I just push all that in there, and then I just sew. You just need to keep the neck, like the inch in front of you sorted, and line it up on the seam line right there, not the raw edges, but the seam line, like that, and then it's, it's done. <gasps> Did you hear that? I just heard a rip. What was that? I just heard a rip. I just heard a rip. I know this fabric will be easy to rip. What was that? <gasps> That's my center back yoke. That was my center bag yoke. Wow. There's a reason, another reason not to clip into your fabric. <laughs> Let's fix this. I have an idea. I have to get some interfacing though. I, I could take out all the stitching and then um, redo the, um, cut that yoke. But if you don't have that fabric, what are you gonna do, right? All right, so we're gonna use a piece of fusible interfacing. Get these off my thing here. 
I would even use a pinking shear to cut this. If you're worried the cut edge of the inner facing is gonna show through. We're gonna put this under here. I can't see chat, sorry if it's, you guys are asking me stuff. All right, we're gonna put that there. Just line up those edges. We don't rage quit. We fix it and move on. It's okay, there's a time and a place to rage quit, trust me, I know. All right, so we're gonna get this on there. <laughs> what do we want? This, will be, this would look nice. I love you to the moon and back. You're a good egg. Yay! We're looking for a nice square label. Go, go juice. Oh, I think this one's perfect. <laughs> a little naughty word right there. It's just not long enough, but what if we did this? Well, if we unfolded this, we could make it longer. I think that that's the winner, <laughs> just because it's funny. <laughs> All right, so. All right. <laughs> it's, it's no, but it's a poplin. What we are here for, drink. This is the, um, no, it's not. Well, the stream's over. <laughs> I was trying to find what someone was. Exactly, free unexpected mending tutorial. All right, wait, wait, let's um, iron this out a little bit. The good egg that they go with, made with love and swear words. I don't think I have that one. This one, this might be a little too hot. This is from uh, the advent calendar. And then I do have a few others that have been given to me like in, you know, like kits and things. We need some thread though. This is kind of a unique color thread. Oof, that might be my best option. No, gray, no. No, no. Okay, wait, one more spot. I gotta go to the, the bowels of the thread. Okay, what, there's gotta be one in here. Let's see. YouTube. YouTube wants me to give you an ad again. We should try it sometime and see what kind of impact it does, but eh. Uh, um, this is just, you know, I could go with the, the, the text is brighter. Oof, that looks terrible on the camera. Um, hmm. Kind of thinking this one I already have is gonna be good enough. Th these are not regular weight threads in here. These are thicker, thinner, but look at that one right there. I can use just two strands of this. That's what I'll do. All right. We got this. Oh, that, that guest designer she has right now, those labels are really cute.
<laughs> Sham. Um, I'm going to take this spool thread off here. I'm going to put two th spools of thread on here because this thread is really thin. It's for sewing with a needle, like a size eight needle. It's a bit of a tension issue when I do it. I wonder if I could keep the same uh, bobbin. We'll test it. Now threading the needle with two strands when they're kind of winging out different ways, that's another story. Oh, I did it. Oh, I almost pulled it out. Heck. All right, thanks. <laughs> hmm. Let's just change the bottom. Even do a cream will be better. I think the cream will actually blend in better. We just went, Arr! turn the car around. Why are we changing thread? Shim, can you just time him out if he's not paying attention? He's not even watching the stream. He's just using me to keep him company in his sewing room. Um, you missed me ripping the shirt. <laughs> All right, so here's the, I couldn't even find it. Okay, there's the rip right there. Uh, you have screaming kids, it's right there. So we're going to just make it a little bit longer, like right here. I need to get to, hmm, I need to get it into the seam line up there. Like this. Okay. Let's put this right side up to me. Okay, that's the end. Oh, okay, we, we're fine. I can do that. I kind of want a little lower though. You can totally see my cream bobbin it, the, I should have checked the, I did check the tension, didn't I? Huh, it was better with the blue thread. I'm, I'm taking it out, just a second. See that, it's just coming right out. I need to tighten up the bobbin thread a little bit. Okay. Oh, yeah, 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 that's the designer, exactly. They're really cute. What is, wait, is that a piece that the instruction would tell you to stay stitch? The neck, yeah, definitely. The neckline, for sure. And um, it probably would have prevented it. I don't know, I kind of wanted to match it because I thought it would look kind of cool and not take away from the label. I also know like sewing the blue thread on top of it probably would have been, um, looked wiggly. Okay, that looks better. I just tightened up the bobbin.
I really like had to think about what needle size I wanted today. I usually use a size 16 for most things. <laughs> and um, I went with a 14 today. There we go. Can't even probably see it, but there you go. That corner didn't turn very nicely right there, did it? It's because it's that one of the threads is loose. See, it's actually square. <laughs> okay. All right, back on track. Let me just rethread. <laughs> My brother loves those labels. Like hearing him giggle when he saw one on his shirt was the absolute best. And every time I see him, he's wearing something I made him. Um, and even when he doesn't know he's going to see me. It's, it's pretty sweet. Okay. Did I change the bobbin? Nope. <laughs> I know, I actually was thinking you were going to be the one that would say, um, no, you can't finish this shirt today. I need two streams. Yeah, Aisha, it doesn't mean I need a size 16. I just like being ready for anything, <laughs> you know. <laughs> I can't see the thread uh, uh, very well on this to know if the um, bobbin is okay, so I have to feel it. Okay, carry on. All right, let me, uh, I top stitched this. Uh, we did one shoulder. So now let's top stitch this shoulder and then we'll do the other side. And we will not rip it. Yeah, me too, Kelly. I got the advent calendar as a, uh, the Christmas gift. And, um, it was really fun because I got it, you know, on Christmas day at the, you know, when the advent was all done. And so I could do all of them at once. <laughs> it was really fun. My mom was like, Ooh, this is kind of fun opening the whole advent calendar. I'll do it from the neck this time. So when I do this non burrito style method, um, so right now this is the inside of the back, which you can see because my label's there, right? And then it's right sides together to the front there. I'm going to pick up the inside yoke, line up these two on the seam line right here, line it up at the seam line on the shoulder. And then we're going to take it, don't get lost, flip it around whoop, like this. Is this the way I like to go? Actually, this one might be better to do from the shoulder. So let's just do it from the shoulder. I'm a little worried about that ripping thing now. I'll do it this way. Yeah, it's a little more space. When I first figured out how to do this, it was mainly because back then they would have you do this um, kind of blind. And it was really hard to get your inner shoulder sewn um, nicely, right? And so then I was like, well, I'm just gonna do it from the right side. And then I was like, why can't I just do this right sides together? <laughs> you know, and then it would eliminate it. And that's how I figured it out. But I would sometimes get lost in what seam I was sewing and like accidentally go down the armhole or the neck, right? This time I'd be really careful when I turn it right side out. Cause I don't want, I can't put a label on the front yoke. We're just really lucky that happened on the inner yoke. So yeah, so just, you can like make a little mark like with chalk or a pin or something saying this is the shoulder seam, only so on the long parallel to the shoulder seam. All right, so now we have our fronts to our shoulder and our yoke is clean finished. I pre-washed this fabric with other fabrics and there's all kinds of stuff on it. Uh, I want to do the same order as the instructions. I hope I am actually. Here, this one. Ooh. 
<laughs> well, that's cool. A lot of people love that the burrito method, though. I think that's awesome. Top stitch the yoke seams, quarter inch. Now she says to stay stitch the neck. Um, all right, so we're going to put the facing on, collar, facing him, side seams, sleeve, vent. Got it. So we have our facing. So because I am not overlocking my facing, oh, I actually just thought of another way I could do this. So I'm not overlocking my facing. Oh, I only made one of them bigger, you guys. I only made one of them bigger. Remember? <laughs> so look. All right, so I wanted to say two things. If you are not using a surgery, you don't have a surgery, you don't want to use the zigzag, I, for a very, very long time, would just turn under the edge of my facing, even if it was interfaced, I would just turn it under and top stitch it. No surging, no zigzag along this edge. I still have lots of garments like this. None of them fray. They're totally fine. Um, and the edges actually stay a little bit nicer to iron. They need less ironing. So that is one thing you can do. Um, and it looks really nice. It just looks like a little, you know, line of stitching along the edge of your facing nice and flat you may have to if it's a really curved facing like some are very curved you might have to clip that curve a tiny bit to be able to do that but that is all on the bias so you should be able to do it you can iron it first if you want but i would just turn back a quarter inch so that's why i gave myself that extra on this but then i forgot i didn't do it on this one so here's what i could do i could make this my outer facing and just hem it over this one that's that's probably what i'll do um, or I could sew these right sides together along this facing edge. So in turn, it would put the seam offset when I lined it up here, but that'd be okay. In fact, let's do that because that's the weird thing. We'll, we'll, we always like doing the weird thing so that we can demonstrate something. At least I do. <laughs> I couldn't live without burritos, to be honest. All right, so I'm just going to sew this right sides together. So I put the one that's bigger and the, you know, one is the one that's going to show on the inside of the garment. And one is going to be the interfacing, right? So we're just going to sew these together right sides. Basically, this is the, I'm ironing the interfacing to the facing step. Just preparing my facing. So then I can just treat it like it, the rest of the pattern says to. And we'll do this one too. I think you could have stay stitched those before sewing. Um, I am definitely not the best at stay stitching, like meaning I don't do it very often. I would if this was a linen or the homespun, a hemp, a rayon, <clears throat> but something as stable as this poplin, I'm not too worried about it. And I, I do like the idea of stay stitching it once the neckline is sewn so that you only have one line of stitches. But there are lots of people who do, like the pattern companies, there's a lot of them that do it so that um, they have you just do, the, do the, all the stay stitching before you even do any of the assembly of the garment. I'm going to put on my stream here. There we go. Where's the chat? What was that? Oh, okay. All right, so I'm just gonna press the seam allowance one way. Just press the seam. 
It doesn't matter which way you press the seam allowance because we're gonna do something to line it up in a second. And now I'm gonna line up the center front and the neckline. This one, I may have to trim this one down. But do I? Yeah, I probably do. This one was the, um, yeah, like that. We'll do it on this side. Which one's the real one? This is the real one right here. All right, so yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna try and line that up. It's gonna be a little bit funky. Yeah, I mean, it, it is kind of smart to do that, except if you have trouble keeping the width of your seam allowances accurate, then what'll happen is you'd have a line of stay stitching on this neckline and a line of stitching on this neckline, right? And then when you go to sew your seam, one of them could peek out the seam, which is, you know, not ideal, right? All right, so I'm just, so the seam of this is like right there. Okay. Yeah, a lot of companies do all the stay stitching right away. And that's probably why I said me. They, they kind of, I think they want to do, they do that because they want to make sure you're doing it and they're trying to illustrate like, hey, if we just make this one big sewing step, maybe more people will doing it. I am doing, is it just you're suffering with fusible? Well, I didn't use a fusible on this one because I am suffering with fusibles right now. They are definitely not making me happy. I'm having a big problem with them looking like cellulite on my garments. I'm gonna open up this seam allowance right here and see if it lays better. And so I opted to just cut it in fabric. And I'm just clean finishing this edge because I'm not using the serger today. That's all. <laughs> I'm actually not liking this, sewing this as a seam because it's a little offset. It's like, it's all right, it's not okay. It's not, it's not great. I think hemming it would have been better. Cause I'm having this, like trying to get this lined up here. But the, this is the correct one. So I'm gonna trim this one to match it. Like this, this is too close since I didn't get that right on the edge because I didn't do the right width. What, I, what could I do this? You know what, that's what I'm gonna do. I am gonna fold it along that edge. I am a real girl. I'm gonna fold it right along this edge and then trim off the excess. That I think that'll be nicer. It's the only drawback to this is that now it got really narrow at the shoulder and that's what I was trying to prevent. Oh yeah, that's way better. Probably can't even see it, but see I have this little extra here because this is the one I made a little bigger, but now it's right here on the edge. Let me get this a little flatter. This is definitely an unconventional finish. There are a lot of people though that do sew their interfacing right sides together to their facings along the edge. Oh, one of those two pieces acting as your, yes. Yes, 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 Kelly. One of these is my interfacing. Oh, wow, Amanda, yeah. Yeah, my problem is that I never used it. I only used fabric. I started live streaming and Fusible is very popular. So, I and I used to get some of it in like a sponsored project from Hearts. They would send me Fusible woven interfacing and I was like, okay, this stuff, this stuff's all right. Cause I wanted to use what they sent me since they were trying to showcase what they sell in their store and the sample hangs in their store. It, they own it and they, and it's there. So I would use it and I was like, all right, this stuff's pretty nice. And so I started using it a lot more 
And then uh, the panini happened. We don't say the P word in our chat because I'll, I can get, yeah, just don't say it. Don't type it in chat, please. <laughs> and then um, the panini happened. And for some reason, all of the fusible SF-101 now is rubbish. And um, I'm not using it anymore. Like I, I just can't get it to work. It's really bad. It like um, looks like cellulite. I did an experiment where I pre-washed it to see if that would help. I've tried different settings like everyone keeps telling me to do and it's not me. <laughs> it's them. <laughs> I'm just trimming off this little bit now. Okay, now we're ready. No, Libby, don't look closely at it. Yeah, shouldn't Sydney? Woven Fuse, is that a brand? We've been talking about using this um, company. What's it called, you guys? Fashion something? Right, Nancy? I bought two bolts. I bought a black bolt and a white bolt. Yeah, Trico is my favorite. Yeah, Kelly, I agree with the Trico. In fact, one of the things I've figured out kind of by accident, I'm going to edge stitch this little fold here, is... Um, is I bought a roll of it, a three inch roll that I brought it out re briefly earlier. And I love that thing. Like that thing has been one of the most useful things I've gotten in the last couple years because it works for waistbands, facings, um, plackets. I really love that narrow edge, na narrow width. It's really useful. And the Trico never gives me a problem. It like becomes the fabric, you know? What is that? Okay. All right, so now we have these two facings and um, it's kind of interesting how you do this. You sew the facing to the center front This is the other one. Fashion Sewing Supply, thank you. Yeah, someone else recommended the Patty Palmer one. Yeah, that Azores is, it's pretty much ruined, Libby. I just wear it. Same with the uh, March top with all the, the green faces on it. Same thing. Oh, three eighths inch. <laughs> quarter inch seams for life, baby. <laughs> I am so uh, so quarter inch seams on like necklines and plackets and things, you know. All right, so I'm just sewing this right sides together to the center front. And I'm going to turn at the three quarter inch mark. Let's see, is that about right here? And I'm going to line up with the shirt and we're going to sew across the bottom like this. And then I'm going to trim the facing only. Boop, like that. And then we're going to cut that corner. I'm just kind of getting ahead there because that's going to clean finish the hem right here. You see that? So here's my edge of my facing. This is the center front. This is the hem. I turned the corner right there at a three quarter inch hem allowance. Trimmed off the facing only. Trimmed across the, the corner there. And then when we turn it on the inside, it'll be a clean finished hem right here. We just need to hem this little bit, okay? 
I am not surprised, Sydney. Have you met her? What's she up to these days? What a legend. <laughs> What's a good alt for it now? Uh, Michelle, I would check out the things people are talking about in chat, like that fa fashion sewing supply place, um, Patty Palmer, um, Perfect Fusion Patty Palmer, and then um, the one Terry mentioned, Woven Fuse. I would try those. And that fashion sewing supply, the website's a little old school looking. <laughs> you know? But uh, I haven't tried it yet just because I do have these couple bolts and I'm just like, I guess I'm just going to sit there and be mad about it for a little bit longer. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Woven Fuse is really close to SF11. Yeah, exactly. I think a lot of those are too. All right, so let's do the other side. I sort of, I kind of, this is the kind of out of order how I would do this. I would do this with the collar. I would have assembled the collar, put it to the neck, and I would have done the um, facing and the front collar at the same time, I think. Okay, same thing, I'm gonna pivot at the three quarter inch mark. One more stitch. Right there. Trim just the facing. Trim the corner. All right. Uh, let's see what steps she has you do it in. I should just keep this open, huh? Okay, so now we're gonna assemble the collar. Was I already supposed to do that? I don't see those instructions. Oh, here they are. Where, was I already supposed to have put the collar together? Oh, I think you put the collar together in step three. Whoops. Oh, really? How, how awesome. In um, Washington? Is that where she lives? <laughs> Not that I want to, you know, creep and fangirl on somebody. Uh, okay, yeah, so this one of these is the facing. So I'm just going to treat my uh, facing as just one, like with the fabric. None of this complicated facing stuff I just did, right? Okay, so now my top collar is interfaced, all right? And then my under collar, we're going to sew this together at the short edge with the notch, right sides together. The reason you don't put the whole collar, like the whole thing on the uh, bias as for the under collar is that it would just get too crazy. Having this little center seam stabilizes it a little bit. All right, and then this color, like the shape of it is really throwing me off. This is the top, okay, okay. Um, <laughs> um, all right, is that, no, like this? Okay. All right, and then I'm just gonna line up, so this is my under collar right here on top. We're gonna line it up to the edge because it's probably not the exact same shape or size. So we're just gonna ignore that and just sew it together. I probably should have put a center notch on that outer edge. I didn't even think about that. I don't usually, cause there's no seam to line up. Lolana Fusion, there we go. She lives in Portland. Hmm. 
That's awesome. All right, so we just did those three sides. And uh, I'm gonna trim this down just a tiny bit. Trim around my corners. With these kinds of collars, knowing when to top stitch it is kind of tricky because you need that edge along the neckline to be loose when you attach it to the shirt. But also having that edge top stitched first is kind of nice. So let's go and press it. And we'll press the center front facings as well. All right, so I'm gonna turn this right side out. Need my awl. This, is this bright enough over here? Turn this one. Like that. All right, and then put my all back over there. I'm just gonna press it. I like to press this whole seam first, just flat. <clears throat> It'll lay nicer if I do. It just makes it easier. Same with this one, the little ends. Can't underestimate the little ends, you know? All right, and now that I have all that pressed, I'm gonna line up the raw edge to itself. Like this. The bias is doing weird stuff. And then we're just gonna I like doing it from the right side actually. So flip it over, do it from the right side. We care less about the, what the under collar does than we do about the top at this stage. See the under collar makes it torque a little. This is what I'm, I'm not a huge fan of bias under collars. I think they have their benefits and probably in some fabrics, they're really great. I don't know which fabrics those are. <laughs> I bought them from Joanne Fabrics. They had an interfacing sale. I buy very little from them. Um, so it, it's just not a place I shop. It's not for any, whoa, particular reason. I can find all of the things I need from other places. They had a, a big interfacing sale last winter. And so I was like, you know what? Just get a bolt of each. You'll be happy you did. Famous last words. I don't like these corners right here. I'm gonna try from this side here. Okay, I'm being really careful. <laughs> yeah, that little torquing thing not a fan, not a fan. Okay. All right, so let's let's press the center front plackets too. So again, I just kind of lay it flat and then I press that seam down the center front before I turn it. This. Okay. 
All right, so let's uh, turn this corner here. Right here at the hem. Sorry, my hands are always chewed up. <laughs> I really have started wearing gloves more, I promise, in the yard. <laughs> Kind of get this better. All right. So now that I have, I've pressed that edge. Now I'm going to turn the facing back on itself and press it. We're going to sew it right sides together in a second, though. But we're just trying to trying to get it like into the groove of what we're expecting of it, you know? We're setting our expectations. This is what you're gonna do for the rest of your life. FYI, you know? It doesn't look nice and clean finished though. All right, and let's do this one here. And then we're gonna put the collar on. Actually, let's do it from this side. I like, I think, oh, I want to press that seam allowance towards the body. It doesn't matter too much, but it's a little easier to press and a little easier to flip over. I love this fabric. <laughs> well, you know, I see those tutorials and they have like beautiful like polish on there. Look at Loki bit me the other day right here. He went chomp and now my fingernails doing some funny stuff. Remember when I burned myself here? I have a new freckle now. Yeah, new freckle. I have a little bit of poison oak right here. I don't know what this is, but that just happened. Sometimes I, before, when I'm doing like a really close up how to, like a uploaded how to that I'm putting a lot of effort into it, I put makeup on my hands. And you know how I learned that was watching a Procreate tutorial, like a behind the scenes, not behind the scenes. They were doing like a, on Fridays, they always post like a day um, in the life of one of their employees. Um, and I always love those. And one of them was the person who records the videos and I was like, ooh. <laughs> and then he put all like just tons of foundation on his hands. And I was like, oh God, I can't believe I've never thought of doing that. I didn't own any at the time. <laughs> I had to go get some. <laughs> it, it, and I don't think it's that essential, but it is nice when your hands aren't distracting, you know? I'm, I'm suffering for real estate right now here. <laughs> I need some space. My iron's in the way of ironing. <laughs> the shirt's getting kind of big. Yeah, I totally recommend it, Terry. I'm almost done with that roll. Remember when I got that roll? You really can't, Nancy. I totally agree. Ugly pause. <laughs> Heidi. <laughs> Oh yeah, I think everyone knows I'm real. If you're in the pants fitting skill building session, you've seen way too much of me lately. Way too much of me. <laughs> I gotta turn off my phone when I do these streams now because um, it'll be drained by the end of the day. Yeah, I think the next time I get the Trico, I'm gonna get like two different size rolls. I don't know how narrow it goes. Maybe like a two inch and a four inch. I have the three inch roll and I love it. And constantly I'm shaving off a two inch piece and then I'm left with the one inch strip and that, that has come in so handy like for collar stands and plackets. Right, Malin? I started wearing a little makeup because I've had such bad rosacea the past year. It's distracting. 
All right, enough about me. I don't want you guys looking at this stuff like, what's wrong with their hands? <laughs> My hands. In this overexposed light. See, look, this burn turned into a freckle. I burn myself so often, it's, it's terrible. Like, it's just dumb, you know? I, I really need to not. All right, here's my collar. Here's my under collar. All right, and so she probably has you do the um, right sides together, right? Hmm, is that how I wanna do it? I kinda do. I think that that would just kind of be the straight up way to do this. Cause you know me, I usually like to do it so that I'm doing the right side last. And you kind of are this way. So yeah, I think this is the best way to do this. Okay, so if you've um, got your collar all like pretty right now, so look at my collar. This is important cause a lot of people have trouble with this little step right here. You see how my you can see my fabric sticking out right here, this little eighth of an inch right there. So that's the top collar. This is the under collar. See, there's the seam right here. There's the seam. Oh, why isn't my seam pressed open? So this is why I spent some time pressing my collar and making sure that the raw edges are lined up, right? Now I'm having trouble with that seam loss there. Okay, so when you look at your top collar and you have your raw edges all lined up, make sure that every layer is the same. So you see how this one right here, see how this little piece right here is sticking out? That's my interfacing layer. Um, I'm gonna trim that off because what'll happen is if you go by that rather than your other edge, you can end up having an alignment issue. And so let's just make sure the collar is symmetrical, all right? And that actually, this edge is a little too short compared to the others. It's probably that torquing. Let's make sure we want our color symmetrical. I'm just gonna trim it down a little bit right there so those edges are all even, just a little bit. And then this is uh, the two layers. All right, so I know that I should go by the seam also. So your seam on your center back under collar, it might pull the fabric a little bit tighter and make this length right here shorter than the collar. And that's to be expected because the bias right here is kind of relaxing. And so it doesn't have the confinement of the seam kind of pulling it together. So you gotta kind of watch that. Make sure it's not pulling it up so much that you have this little, like a peak right here. And I can see that my collar dips below that, but it might be designed to do that. I don't think it is, but it's kind of like this a little bit because of the bias. So I'm just looking it over. I just feel like that's gonna give me a problem right there. That's why I keep checking it. All right, I'm just gonna trust it. One inch rolls, ooh. <laughs> yeah, Kelly. Kelly's our interfacing way whack catalog nerd. I don't know, Michelle. And Elena has been trying to order, but her order got shipped to the wrong address. So she hasn't gotten it yet. And then there's a couple people, other people who have ordered from there, so. All right, so. If this is your right side of your collar, like this is the outer collar, the top collar, this is where you want your stitching to look nice. The under collar, not so much, right? Because when the collar's folded back on itself, the that'll not show, right? Theoretically. <laughs> so this is di a little different than a collar stand because um, we aren't, we don't have the collar stand in between the collar 
and the neckline and uh, that way to enclose the whole neckline using the collar pieces rather than a facing. So if you really hate having to clean finish this little section in the neck and you're having a lot of trouble, you've tried a few times, it's just not going good, draft a facing. It's very easy to do. You're gonna lay your yoke down on a piece of paper. You're gonna trace the shoulder, the neckline, shoulder, and then you're gonna draw a parallel line around the neckline, the width of your facing, the cut width of the facing at the shoulder. And you can make it a little deeper at center back if you want, and then go back up. Now I know you're gonna have a facing on top of your yoke and that is not traditional, but if you're just at that point where you're pulling out your hair and you're not gonna finish this project and that is what's separating you for, between completion and throwing it in the bin. Um, that's what I would recommend, just draft a facing. And then you can sew the facing, shoulders seams together, right sides together to this one. Lay your collar between the notches, lay your facing on top, and sew one continuous sandwich seam, and you're done, except for understitching, okay? So that's my little pep talk if you're really having trouble with that. So, all right, so we're gonna line up our under collar to the neckline here on the outside. Let's get some pins. And I think I'm gonna add my tag on top of this one here. <laughs> back to pinning. Okay, our collar, we're gonna pin it between the notches. So the notch on the collar to the shoulder seam. Try not to pull that under collar because it's gonna be a little bit unruly since it's on the bias, but it'll be pretty easy to do. So you don't have to sweat it. And remember, you wanna line this little notch up on the seam line. And I don't mean like the seam line out here, I mean like where you're gonna sew your neck seam. I'm a real stickler for this because this is why necks get really hard to fit because we didn't line it up there. All right, so now we have this and we're gonna stitch between our shoulders. Don't go less or more, just do just notch to notch. Stay on the seam line perfectly. If you have to draw a line, go for it three-eighths inch seam on this one. Get all these threads at my label towards the neck, or the raw edge, I mean. So right now we're just sewing the under collar to the shirt through the yoke. Stop at that shoulder seam. All right, and so I may go back and sew a little bit more here, and it'll probably be to go one stitch past my notch at each end, because I find that the notch is sometimes, the notch kind of um, foils our attempts to have a really nice looking collar, because it will be exposed and you'll have this like little raw point there, right? All right, and so now, we're gonna line up the collar to the other notch at the center front here, right? Just like this. So I'm gonna line it up and I kind of pull the collar over so that I get this edge on the seam line right there. Oh, that's awesome. I'm glad someone knows Michelle. <laughs> And you see that, like, here's the notch, here's the center front seam. So here, right here, I'm running my nail along the center front seam, right? And here's my notch right here. And so when I line this collar up, I'm trying to line up the collar on the seam line of the collar on the seam line of here. And I pull this collar back because you don't want it to go 
at an angle like this. You want to line it up. If that's how it is, you want to line it up like that because you don't want to create something that's not there. And I'm, I'm also pulling the under collar under the collar. Like I'm pulling it like this so it's not sneaking out along this front edge. And I'm gonna double check that didn't happen over here because I felt like it was. So let's just push that under collar under there a little bit more. Where to boss here? Like that, all right. And so now we're gonna fold our facing over at the seam, which would be really easy. And we're gonna line it up along the neckline. Now, when I'm doing this, make sure your shirt is like up because it'll pull on it and it'll distort it. And you don't want that. So I pull it up and now I'm gonna pull, uh, pin all this. And if you wanna stitch this on here, go for it. But um, what I, why I don't do that is when I go to stitch, stitch the facing down, what'll happen is if I don't get that stitch line to include the first one I did to tack it, it may be exposed and we don't really want that because this is the right side of our garment here. So I'm gonna just repin this little spot here because I already worked hard to get it in the right spot and now I know it's there. All right, and then we're lining up these raw edges to the neckline here. Like this. And when you get to here, to this notch, you're going to pull away the top collar because we're gonna sew this like a little sandwich along the facing edge and then we're gonna not catch the collar between the shoulder lines there. And I, and I see a lot of people's frustrations with this because a, a lot of times what'll happen is that this little juncture where you hold pull back ends up showing a little bit. And so it's just this weird little tricky balance to get it to lay right. We'll put a lot of pins in today. All right, and so I'm gonna fold the um, shoulder back of this facing, I think. It's barely reaching though. We, we want it to reach. Let's see if we can pull it a little bit more, get it to lay flat. Because remember, the collar is straight, the neckline isn't. And I didn't uh, stay stitch the neckline, so it could be stretching a little bit. So let's, let's, um, let's, um, here, let's pin this right here at the neck. I haven't done one of these in like years. I did this, I think I did this kind of collar on the, Read a shirt dress and the um, Caroline pajamas. All right, Sydney. <laughs> um, the I always pinned like that, Amanda. Always, I love pinning like that. I don't because you can't sew over the pins, and it is really dangerous. I hate to sound like a school marm, but that is the reason. The reasoning is just that the pin can get caught, like the head of the pin can get caught in your feed dogs there. And what'll happen is you'll be sewing along and you won't see that you're dragging a pin the whole time you're sewing. The pin is just sitting there like this. And your presser foot, it's like sitting in the nook of your feed dogs and your presser foot is just pulling it along as you sew and you can't see it there. And, um, um, eventually it'll get loose and then you'll sew it or it'll break or something like that. So, yeah, so the perpendicular thing is great because if you pin pointing towards the raw edge, you can pull them out as you go and you can sew right over. I sew right over them. I know people are like weird about that, but I don't, I've never had a problem with it. So, all right, I'm just getting my raw edges lined up here again. What I was trying to do is eke back a little bit of seam allowance here at the shoulder. We're gonna pin that right there at the notch and I'll show you in just a second what I just did. And so now I have, can you see the collar kind of buckling under there? 
That's probably just because when we sew it on the seam line, it's going to be fine. Because the collar is straight and the neckline is curved. And then at the shoulder here, so this is the little pinned back edge of my back. See it? Yeah, well, it's easier to pull as it's coming towards you, but if you miss one, like if it's in the folds, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I love doing it that way too, and I just don't because, you know, it's dangerous. <laughs> I probably am in my first few streams. You know, when I was a little bit nervous of, cause you know, I didn't know anyone live streaming sewing. So I didn't really have anyone to look at and go, you know, how are they handling this or that, you know? Um, and I have spent a lot of times in streams to know how people can be. <laughs> and I have also spent enough time in the sewing arena to know that everybody's a know-it-all. <laughs> And you know what, maybe they do know more than me and that's totally fine, but I'm pretty uh, chill about that. Like I am totally fine with you knowing more than me. Like I'm here to learn too. So I did, so I changed some of my sewing practices to curtail some types of comments cause I would get them occasionally. Like for a while there I was getting comments about my rotary knife. Like that's the thing people were glomming onto. Your you, way you use your rotary knife makes me really nervous. You need to close your rotary knife. Stop putting your rotary knife out. And I was just like, why, why are people so focused on this? Like it's not, it's not unsafe right now. And what I realized is that the way it looks to you at home, it's really hard. You don't have a, the depth perception of how close the rotary knife is to me. But if you could see it this way, like I am, you'd know that it's, it's really far away from my hand. And so I finally realized that that's what I had to do to explain to people, you know, you know, whatever. But um, anyway, so I did change a few of my uh, sewing practices because I didn't really want to deal with that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, like I totally like doing it too. Yeah, stitching in space, like I, I totally get you. Like, and sometimes I catch myself doing it and I'm like, whatever, no one's watching. <laughs> so, all right, so I'm gonna sew this now. And so I've pinned um, everything, but we're leaving this little section here. My, my top collar and interfacing are hanging free, all right? And so when you get to this little sho so shoulder juncture, so let's get there first. We're sewing at the seam allowance here. And I'm gonna, this is my shirt, and I'm just gonna kind of do this and kind of pull on it to make sure that it's not getting any tucks in it and that my edge is lining up to my collar. I'm gonna pull my collar down like this. I kind of manage all the layers a little bit, you know, just to kind of get those raw edges to line up. All right, and so now here we are, we're approaching that crazy juncture here. I don't even know how to explain what I'm gonna do. I'm, I'm already like going, what do I do usually? <laughs> um, but uh, what I do is I kind of like, I sew a little further up the cut notch. So there's the little, I really need to remake this frame. It's getting a little dicey. It's so dark. Let's, let's um, zoom it in and brighten it up. Yeah, exactly, Amanda. I totally agree. I like how much surface area it grabs too. Brightness up to a million. Zoom. How's that? It's really hard to see. <laughs> Okay, right here, this is the turn back shoulder. <laughs> nice, Aussie. All the live streams get uploaded too, but then you can't talk and chat, you know? Yeah, right? Terry's been here for a long time. She's seen the, the rotary knife comments. I had one the other day in one of my uploaded videos. And the thing is, like I see some of those, I've gotten a weird, few weird comments lately. 
Um, one where someone was mansplaining my industrial machine to me, once again, something I've used for 25 years. Um, and then I had a really nice guy asking me the difference between the Sailrite and the Juki. In fact, I was going to ask you, Terry, about some of that. But um, I had someone else say, your use of the rotary knife makes me really nervous, really uncomfortable. And I was just like, why did you have to write that? It, it actually kept going in my head all day because I was just like, why write that? So what? I'm fine. So... A video show and someone told the person what they should be charging for their pad and seven dollars was too expensive. Oh my gosh. Yeah, they haven't done the math of what it takes a pattern company to survive. All right. Uh, give me all. Wait. Let me show you everything here. So, all right, this is my collar right here, right? This is my facing right here. Sorry, it's really bright because I want you to see the dark fabric. This right here is my turned back facing shoulder edge. This right here is my top collar and interfacing. It should be two layers actually right here, two layers, see, like that. And we're gonna pull, and this one's not clipped because it was my interfacing, so we're gonna clip that one. I'm gonna use my other scissors. We're gonna clip it up to the seam allowance, just, just shy of the end of the seam allowance, all right? And now we're gonna pull this back and we're gonna expose that seam line right there. And I'm gonna sew right over the notch, the cut notch, like right at the crook of it, okay? Kind of choking up on it. All right, and then um, we'll keep going here. I know I've already sewn this seam, but we'll just uh, keep going rather than, you know, starting it over again. Exactly, Aussie. I think I'm doing okay. I've been using a rotary knife since almost the day they came out. I'm really comfortable with it. I'm sorry that it makes someone else uncomfortable, but at the same time, um, you know, it's just it's just the uh, visual perspective. I think it's really hard to tell how far away it is from my hands. All right, and so here we are at the other side. Here's the little turn back shoulder. See it right here? Or I'll unpin it so you can kind of see. Right, and then this is the top collar, and uh, that shoulder is right up against the notch. See the notch right here? And then we're gonna pull this back, and I'm gonna sew right at that juncture of the notch. I kind of have to pull. You don't want this this um, notch to get stretched out there. All right, and so now we're back on the front with the facing, the collar, and the um, front. So we're gonna make sure all of our raw edges are lined up. This little torquing in the collar is still kind of bugging me. I never use pins, so I just don't really have a good place to put them sometimes. And my little magnet right here, which I hate using magnet for pins, is a little full right now. Don't let that edge of the collar there, don't let it dip down. Finish strong. I always think of it that way. Finish strong when you get to that little curve here. You don't want this to slip down and then like be not all the way to the raw edge right there. All right, let's get rid of all of our pins. And then let's just lift it up and check it out. Make sure we have no tucks. Like right there is a little funny, but that might be the thickness of the fabric. This is what this is something I would have skipped when I was learning to sew and for like the first like 10 years. I just wouldn't have looked. I would have been like, it's fine. It felt fine. So it must be fine. You know what I mean? <laughs> right, Mullen? Exactly. <laughs> that just takes time, Amanda. I know. <laughs> Yeah, that's kind of what it takes, Nancy, right? Okay, so we looks like we're good to go. So now we're gonna tr we're gonna clip this neckline edge. 
And we're gonna clip this corner right here at the center front. And um, I don't just like clip the corner, I kind of do a rounded thing like this. And I'm gonna go back and reinforce that corner there for the back stitching. Mainly because this isn't a collar collar stand, so uh, I'm not sure if I'm top stitching right there to secure it. And if I'm not, I should probably make sure that the back stitch can't come out. All right, so when you get here, it's a little thick right here. When you get right here, don't trim, don't clip the top collar yet. Just clip the under collar. The part that's sewn actually to the garment right now. Nice little ASMR. So that's kind of, this uh, seam allowance is a little debatable. <laughs> Looks more like half inch. <laughs> Let's trim it down a little bit. Cover up my, my mistake there. <laughs> what are you talking about half inch? It looks like three inch to me. All right, clip this. Oh, that almost went through the seam. All right, so let's reinforce the back stitch on each corner. Since I just like trimmed around the corner there. Like this. And this one too. So now we're going to turn it right side out. Did you, Amanda? Where'd you find sewing ASMR? That sounds nice. I like watching downtown tailoring. She's really fun to watch. You say, <laughs> stop it, Nancy. <laughs> Wouldn't it be funny one day if one of you, um, you didn't know your boss sewed and your boss was in here doing the same thing you are? I, need, I think we need like a sewing, like a so-so checklist of achievements and that should be one of them. All right, let's go press the heck out of this. Yeah, Aisha, that has me thinking a lot. So I I held one of those once and I was like, not one of those. Um, let's see, I need to refresh my stream so I can see the chat here. Here we go. So, so bingo, exactly. We need a so, so bingo of things. Um, yeah, so I held something like that once and I was like, oof, this does not feel like I can be accurate with this. But yours sounds like they've put a lot more thought into it and there's then and the angle is a little better. Okay, I'm just gonna press the seam down first. I need water in my iron again. But it was acting up again the other day, so. Might need the salami. All right, press that seam allowance up into the neck. All right, and now we're gonna pin this down. Make sure you keep everything, the collar straight, exactly flat how you want it. Um, this is way too deep. <laughs> Gonna pin there and then we're gonna pin here oh yeah and we need to clip the 
the, the seam here where we did all this clipping just now. I'm just gonna trim that off. We need to clip this right at that notch too, all the way, all through all layers, because all of this needs to go into the collar. Like that. All right, so we're gonna make sure right here that we have it right where we want it. Pin it first and then we'll go back and finesse it on the machine. I'm gonna get too hungry to do a whole stream, like a whole shirt. The scrunchy girl has her mom cutting fabric with no talking on the kitchen table. It's having, oh, <laughs> the scrunchy girl. <laughs> Some use scissors. I I like rotary knives, but um, I know lots of people who do not. They I know people who don't want to like them, and I know people who want to like them and don't. Um, I, I think it's just one of those weird things, you know, like it's like a mechanical thing. It works for some people, it doesn't for others. When I do pattern drafting. Lately, I use the rotary knife as like a, um, a little cheat to cut things out, but I would never do it professionally. Get that seam allowance under there. I didn't clip this right here like I clipped next to that spot and now I have like this really little narrow piece of fabric length of, of wiggling around. All right, let me go back over here. Now would be a good time to insert ads. No. <laughs> I'm not. That's right, you're not a big rotary knife fan, are you? Quilters invented them. They say that about everything though. No, I'm just teasing. <laughs> I love quilters, I'm just teasing. <laughs> All right, so let's look here. We're ready to go. All right, so here's my little juncture here. This is the one that I have this little narrow slip here. So we'll just, so if all else fails, what you can do is untack a little bit of your shoulder turn back here and then put the turn back higher up, like to cover up your little notch there. Cause right now like this, I have this, um, the seam allowances on the neck. I notched I clipped my neckline, not paying attention to that one of the clips needed to be right lined up there. And so there's this little tiny, skinny, 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 narrow piece of fabric. So I'm like, hmm, maybe I should just make my turn back a little bit bigger here. And then I can cover that little notch up. Have you ever been a mountain biker, Shim? Maybe that helps. I think my big scissors, I have a Wiss. Uh, Mondial, no. What are my two big pairs? Wiss and something else. My pattern scissors are Vebros. All right, 
I'll just make this a little bit longer, like that. Re sew it. There we go. That helped a lot. Yeah, my analogy is um, you always look where you want to go not where you don't want to go. And like as a mountain biker, you're taught that. So you don't look at the pothole because all you want to do is look at that pothole because you're like, oh God, don't go in the pothole, you know, or that rut or whatever, to tree, whatever you're looking at, you know. Um, and um, that helps with the cutting too. I keep thinking the dragonfly bodies are threads. <laughs> all right, so now we're just going to stitch down just the collar and remember, we're stitching on the outer collar and the stitching is going to be on the under collar. So we're not too worried about how it's going to look under there. But technically the under collar is on the outside of the garment and this is against your neck. So neither one of those stitches, the under or the um, top are visible. Yeah, it took me a bit to get to used to these Karen K. Buckley ones, but I actually really like them. They're very satisfying. I don't recommend them for cutting hair. <laughs> I do that sometimes and I feel like uh, that's probably not the good thing for my hair. Yeah, they're serrated because they're serrated. <laughs> See what the other side looks like. Looks pretty good. It landed mostly on the collar. So now we just have this little shoulder turn back here. And um, because that you have the, this isn't really um, like a shoulder seam you can stitch in the ditch. I, maybe I would hand sew that, you know? Do we want to do a top stitch around the whole perimeter? I think so. But you know what we'll do? We'll do it with the hem and we'll make it one long, continuous, satisfying um, thing. Hmm. Polly, thank you. Why are the alerts? Ray didn't get an alert. Alert, alert. Oh, oh, alert box. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Polly, thank you. Let's do it again. Oh wait, I have to wait a second. Let's see, we, we need the sound. That's really nice of you, thank you. Where's the sound? Is it making sound for you guys? And we need rays. It's not gonna let me do rays. Oh, there's Ray. No, I did Ray Polly's again. I just keep mashing it. <laughs> Every time you sew, oh yeah, totally. Okay, let's pull this up a little bit. Are you guys getting the sound? You have the sound, oh, I like the sound. How come I don't have it? What? That's very nice of you, Polly, thank you. Okay, sorry, I'm spamming you guys. <laughs> okay. Uh, so that turned out pretty good. Oh, here's a little, well, we'll just leave it there. It's fine. I think so. So that juncture right here looks like that. When we pull it over. It's going to be 
A-OK. -okay. This is that side where I got the little narrow things and this side I actually, too, they're there. So like I said, that's your backup. If you're feeling like, oh my gosh, am I, I forgot to clip my neck in line with that notch, um, just make this a little shallower. So. No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'll stop spamming it. <laughs> Look at that little lemon. <laughs> All right, so now we're at the uh, sleeves and side seams. So uh, I'm going to do French seams. I'm going to do French seams. What the heck? Oh my gosh. Thank you, Kelly. Oh my gosh. Thank you. Oops, I almost did this wrong. I don't see the sign, the thing on the stream though. I see it in the chat. <laughs> Me too, Kelly. I'm glad you're here. There it is. That's very nice of you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, that's very nice. I know, especially, uh, not streaming much these days. I don't have membership set up because, um, I don't know. I just don't think it's worth it, you know? All right. So I'm doing my uh, side seam, wrong sides together, and I'm going to stop at that notch because we have a vent on the side. And it's down here. Is that really where you do it? Oh, I have to think about this. French seams with the vent. I have to think about this. Uh, that may not be where I want that. Because there's no way to do this without getting some raw edge showing, right? Yeah, I think I'm going to have to stop sewing above this turn back. So I'm going to go to this little angle right here instead of the, the um, notch. Oh, I'm so glad. I'm usually here every Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. But now that I have this uh, online community, I'm spending a lot of time over there. So you're welcome to check it out. Free. It's really fun. Lots of really great people. All these folks are there. The uh, sosoguild.com. Okay, wrong wrong sides together, Sarami. Keep your head on straight. <laughs> yeah, Shem, I have to figure that. I have to do it. Um, I, I have to do it as we're doing it. I haven't done vents with French seams very often either. And I know every time I do it, I'm like... Which is so funny because I think my number one, one of my, well, it's like my top three videos, watched videos, is French seaming inseam pockets. But I remember the first time I did vents and I was like, uh, I'm not sure what I'm doing here. Let me get my scissors. Oh, actually, we'll just go to the um, serger. Cause we'll just do the, I'm going to trim it and iron it. Trim it down. I have my iron so that I can stand on the other side of the table. Give me room. All right, trim this edge down a little bit. I like doing it with the rotary knife because it is a little bit faster and cleaner. I feel like I can get the edge a little bit more parallel, you know? But usually I just do it with scissors at my table because I'm filming. Hehehe. <laughs> 
He doesn't get the fridge seams. My husband does appreciate it. He's really cute. He wears a couple of the things I make him like all the all the time, all the time. And um, one of his favorites is that orange and like dark green plaid Fairfield I made him last year. He wears that thing. It's long sleeve though, so right now he's not. Um, and he's always like, people will say, oh, I like your shirt. And he's always like, oh, that's my wife, you know. And I'm not usually there, thank goodness. <laughs> Oh, I bet there is Terry. All right, so we're gonna turn it around. I feel like I looked it up once and I was like, yep, that's what I did and it still felt terrible. <laughs> you know, sometimes that perfect is what perfect is, you know, like you just, I feel like it's the same with life. You just can't over engineer everything. All right, and so that's gonna leave this here. I'm gonna have to clip it. Yeah, I think that's what happens. All right, so let's iron this one here. This is gonna look so nice on him. He has really bright blue eyes. My daughter, I'm pretty sure, got them from him. All the dragonflies are back right now. They come out like in the afternoon, in the evening, just gorging on little mosquitoes and we just don't have any mosquitoes because of them. They're, they're so nice that way. All right. Well, that's cool. Well, maybe you can walk me through it, Terry. <laughs> I just clip it, right? I just clip it at the top, right? Yeah, fringe seams on cotton lawn. I totally agree, Aisha. All right, so here we go. Finish this French seam here. I'd almost be done with this shirt had I not ripped it. But you know, um, we moved on from that. We didn't rage quit. I'm proud of us. All right, so I'm gonna leave it like that. And then I clip it, right, Terry? You're just right to the... Um... What's the worst that can happen? <laughs> you abandoned it, Aisha. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, the... Uh, you know, it's not, it, it isn't the easiest to put French seams with the, the vent. I, I understand that. And it is really satisfying if you overlock each edge and then sew the seam and press it open flat. That makes a very satisfying vent to sew. I, mean, I feel like I got the raw edge showing, but let's just double check. This side I wasn't paying attention. Okay, we're okay. All right. All right, so now we're gonna do our sleeve. And I'm gonna set it in using a French seam as well. Mainly because I just, I think that this is a little too much curve for flat fell. It could probably be okay. But sometimes there's too much curve. I don't really like doing the flat fell. You know? It's involved. I angled to the dot on the first pass, then clipped the dot. Okay. Okay. 
Let me think about that. Uh, let's go serger. There we go. See, and if I trim this with the rotary knife with my uh, little green mat, I don't leave all these threads on my my wool mat here. <laughs> You can always bring it to a workshop, Aisha. I'll help you. I'll help you. You're kind of in a sewing rut. Any tips to get out of it? I have stuff I want to make. No. Oh, hmm. What kinds of things float your boat, Michelle? Like, for me, I know that the things that kind of get me excited about sewing are very functional items. Like, um, like right now, the, the mesh uh, back door on our on our deck there's a not back door but the mesh screen on our deck door it's just falling apart because the, the it's in direct sun just about all day long and so they break down but so I hate buying another one because it's just a waste but I was you know like that's the kind of project that'll get me excited because I'm like hmm could I fix this one you know that's a more involved project but like for me, it's always functional things like, ooh, the deck is always getting, the, the sprinklers are always soaking the stairs. So what if I made a little uh, water barrier, <laughs> you know? And that, like it's not clothing and it's none of the projects that I have to sew, but it improves the quality of my life in my home, and I love that. You know, I love doing things like that. Oh, the coffee maker is too loud. Maybe I'll make a noise thing for it. All right. So let's put in a easing stitch. But is if, or is it a night mullen? How's it going? Yeah, so, or is it that you're like, you know what, um, I am, I really like nice pajamas and I haven't had a nice pair of pajamas in a long time. Or I've been really hot, I want a tank top to sleep in, it's summer. Um, or that little table needs a cute little tablecloth and I have all this fabric to use. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like it's something unexpected that you don't usually think about. It's not maybe a pattern, but it might be something that just kind of tickles you because it's been on your mind every time you see it or, or, you know, when you go to bed or little quilted back. Yeah. Yeah, like just making projects where you can just watch TV, Nancy, and not think too much. I like that too. Sometimes I crave that. Like making those um, rugs for my bathroom that I did last year, I see those every day and they make me really happy because it's like, oh, I got to use sewing for something really, really functional. There we go. Just take tone down a little bit. What make, wait, you save French seams for stuff that unravels a lot? Does that make, that doesn't make you lazy at all. That's the perfect use for French seams, I think. I totally agree. Like, I just feel like sometimes French seams is the only thing that tames those fabrics, right? Yeah. I did, ended up doing a lot more French seaming when I started my stream because I didn't want there to be some sort of barrier between me and viewers. Like, oh, well, I don't have a serger, it must be nice, you know. Um, I wanted to be able to sew things that anyone could sew with just a straight stitch. And I have really grown to appreciate that those garments, when I put them on, I really like them, you know. But it's double the sewing in some cases, you know, like if you're doing a princess seams or a dress or anything like that, that is a lot of, Adina! That's like double the sewing. 
Adina, how are you? Catch us up. It's been forever. Are you, okay, are you a lawyer now? Are you, is your, is your kitchen remodeled? <laughs> it's been a while since we, we got an update. I hope your summer's off to a good start. Oh yeah, just knit then, Michelle. You're still creating. Ooh, I like that one at Heidi, like reorganizing the fabrics. Yeah. Extremely putsy. Ooh. Um, yeah, I find that anything that makes my quality of life better, it inspires me to, to do stuff. All right, Michelle. Yeah, have a good day. See you around. Yeah, like, like right now my stream setup needs to be kind of updated a little bit. Like, you know, when I've been using it for a while, things just get a little bit out of alignment and out of whack. Cameras are in weird spots. And so I need to kind of touch it up. And I also want to switch from using Streamlabs to going to OBS. But that's like time, you know. All right, so this is my front sleeve, and uh, let's make sure this is my back sleeve. Yep, that's my back sleeve. So this one here goes to this one. Yeah, we need an update. Wait. Yeah, yeah. All right, I'm making sure I've got the front and the front and the back to back. All right, so I uh, like to do set in sleeves with French seams a lot. Now, before you go thinking, oh, that's just way too hard, you're showing off. Hear me out, especially if you have a sleeve with a lot of ease in it, it's a little easier. I don't see the second notch on this, so now I'm kind of thinking. Oh, okay, okay. Never mind, it's there. Jeez Louise, I'm turning myself around here. This is the back in my my hand here. Yeah, okay. Boy, okay. All right, so. So I just put in that easing stitch like I always do. Uh, because we do the French seams, we're gonna offset the seam allowance. So I'm gonna press the sleeve towards the front of the garment, the side seam towards the back of the garment, and then they'll just nestle together right here. And then um, since I have five eighths inch seam allowance, we're gonna do the first pass at a quarter inch. Woo, third year law student. Awesome. Good for you. Do you have a summer break? I hope you get a summer break. All right. Um, is there no top notch of this sleeve? Come on. Did I miss it? I put way too many gathers in this thing. I did it like it was a cap sleeve. All right. Knitting is awesome. What are you knitting these days? When I was a really avid knitter, I always knit in the summer because then you can wear it in the winter, you know? Ooh, that'll be aw That'll get your sojo going. Not that you lost it. It sounds like you're just busy. <laughs> Oh yeah, I took out a little bit too much. Okay, so let's put some more of this back in here. Summer school, <laughs> no break. <laughs> Gonna fly through law school, I love it. Uh, if you, I have a dedicated video sewing tutorial to this particular like sewing a set in sleeve using French seams. So if you want like to try this out um, and you want like more present instruction, <laughs> that'd 
That's actually one of my top watched videos too. I had the nicest comment. I woke up to the nicest comment today. They said something like, I could listen to you talk um, about sewing all day. <laughs> I was like, you really couldn't. <laughs> But that was a nice, <laughs> nice thing to wake up to. Hi, Gregory, how's it going? Miss Cayenne, did you add extra seam allowance? To do? Yes. No, I ha had to add a quarter inch. So I added a quarter inch to the sleeve cap, the sleeve underarm, the side seams of the shirt, and the armholes of the shirt, and that's it. So it was pretty easy. Oh, we really good now. All right, so I'm gonna do the other sleeve right now because. Um, then we just go to the iron once. Yeah, the seam allowance is just not enough, quite enough for doing flat fell or, or the um, French seams. Um, why do I keep getting lost on my shirt here? Here we go. Yeah, someone recently commented <laughs> And Mr. Strings using the buttonhole attachment. You know what, Adina? Um, it didn't work. It would have worked if my machine didn't have electronics. So back here, my machine has this thing, and that prevents me raising up the presser foot. Because that attachment was so big back here, it fit. I think it would have worked. But when I went to raise the presser foot to get fabric under there, this prevented it from moving. Oh yeah, no problem. This is my first one of these. I've only ever really made the Fairfield in menswear. Fairfield, the Jensen, I made the Jensen. Uh, and then the, the Helen's Closet Cameron is unisex. So I've made that one too. <laughs> Nancy. I think about how many people who have passed and I've gotten their sewing supplies and I think like, will I be passing some of their stuff on to someone else when I pass away? <laughs> Do I still have their stuff? <laughs> some of it. Let's check my, I usually check it before I start sewing. There we go. We, we're we easily going to sew this whole thing. What time is it? 2.18? Yeah, right, Adina? I, I was bummed, too. I was pretty... I was I definitely was putting some eggs in that basket. You know? I'm kind of on that whole camp of, can I please just get rid of my home machine? Or, it's not even that I want to get rid of my home machine. I'm fine with it. There's nothing wrong with it. Um... But I just don't like having to pull it out to do buttons and buttonholes. Not that putting that attachment on every time would have been like much faster, but it would have been cool. Yeah, I have a few things. I should probably put them on my website to sell. Oh, you know what? I'll put them in the guild. I'll put them in the guild in the, um, that's what I should do one of these days. Go through all my stuff and put them in the uh, fabric swap area. All right, let's go over to the iron and we're gonna trim down the armhole, press the seam allowance, come back, finish the French seam, hem it, and then we're done. Yeah, Nancy retired. I almost pressed end stream by accident. Okay. Let's um, use the rotary knife for this. Sarami is hungry. <laughs> All right. Be very, very careful doing this.
I feel like that's the seam binding I got from a friend recently. Yeah, it does feel a little bit on that rotten side. <laughs> right, Heidi? So you could just open the Notion shop. Heidi zippers. Yeah, right? I don't want to pull up the other machine. <sighs> oh, well. I mean, you know, just like I said earlier, sometimes it is what it is, right? You know, perfect is as perfect is, so. My button, my buttonhole machine, or my home machine for buttonholes, it's, it's okay. You know, it's like not the best buttonhole. Although, like, I was looking at this Fairfield, and I was like, oh, that's a pretty nice buttonhole. A little bit of loose threads, you know, but... On certain fabrics, it does so great. And other times it's kind of like, hey, I'm definitely not blown away, you know? And I really think that if um, someone in the machine industry, like see, the thing is I want it to be a good machine maker, but not someone like, like I would love a Bernina, but at the same time Bernina just felt it has gotten really expensive, even though they're like definitely one of my favorite machines. I just want one of them to come out with a dedicated buttonhole machine. I don't want it to do anything else. Maybe zigzag. That's it. You know what I mean, jelly beans? All right, so I'm going to turn this sleeve now. Actually, we're going to do this. We're going to press it as best we can. It'll just be easier all the way around. This is too dark. Sorry, it is way too dark for you guys. Let's just brighten it up a little bit and zoom it in a little more. Because we can, you know. Oops, clicking the wrong thing. Oh, let there be light. <laughs> I really want to put some water in my machine, but it really did do something funky the other day. Like it, you just putting water in your machine when it's already hot can make it start regurgitating water everywhere, you know, and mine was definitely doing that. And the water was not pretty and clear, you know? All right, so I'm just going around the armhole and pressing that seam toward the armhole. It doesn't matter which way you press it. it it's really just hard to do it any old way. So I just press it one direction because it'll be so much easier to sew and iron than, and iron and then sew again. Don't skip this. I'm here always to tell you, you know, you can skip this. Right now I'm saying don't skip this part if you want the um, setting in of your sleeve to go really easily. So the, we already did the hard part and you didn't even know it. So, you know, usually when you're trying to set in a sleeve and it has some ease, you're trying to fit in all that extra, right? And when you do it with a French seam, what happens is, you get to sew through the fullness that you're trying to get rid of, right? And so, you know, you can see my seam right here. We're not allowed to stitch through this fullness and create tucks on the next stitch, but we are on the first pass. And because we did that, we just now made the second pass really easy. We won't have to use any pins. We won't have to worry about tucks. It's gonna be really easy peasy. So the only thing about this way of setting in a sleeve is that it's a two-step process. But it's also, I would argue, a guaranteed result that you'll like. And it'll be less frustrating. You can live stream and talk about nothing or everything while you're doing it. It's that easy. So that's my selling point on just trying a French seam uh, set in sleeve. Don't think you can't do it. Oh yeah. I've done that for quilts too, Adina. 
Night Aussie. She taken off. I didn't see, um, I'm assuming she, sorry. Uh, I didn't see, like, it's like past the screen for me. Like I, it scrolled up. Oh, right, stitching in space, I know. And you know, um, that I don't think that would make a difference for me, but I have learned living where I live, there's a, a lot of minerals in the water here. Um, like the, even in the ground, you see a lot of lava rock, lava rock in, the, in people's yards. So there's a lot of minerals here and they say in this kind of area where you have really high minerals to use half tap water, half distilled water. Cause most irons are like, you must just use tap water. And I'm like, eh, not here. <laughs> I'm just ironing on the edge, like right on the edge. You really got to sometimes pull this seam to be right on the edge there. I probably wasn't that accurate just because I am streaming, talking, and hungry. <laughs> but um, just, you know, don't take no for an answer. Yeah, exactly, Aisha. Right, Gregory? I totally agree. And I do. I have a dedicated video on how to do this that it, you can see what I'm doing. Because this fabric, I know, it's a struggle to see. Um yeah, it's in the quick how to essential playlist something. <laughs> it's a long title playlist. I think it starts with the word quick. It's not a quick title. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, you know, it's funny because where I used to live in Humboldt County, it was soft water water is very hard we, we we are those people that have um we can't have those really cool dark colored faucets because they just have water stains all over them from all the calcium and minerals in the water this cap is pretty curved i can really feel it this i think this right here is the hardest part ironing it. And if you have a salami or a ham, you know, like, ooh, where's mine? Here's mine. If you have something like this, this can really help because you don't have to get it flat, you know, on the table. Because I have it turned inside out on the garment above, it makes it so that I can do it a little easier. And I, I, I am just a it's just like years of experience, right? Like this is the kind of thing I do naturally without thinking is positioning my shirt so that it's flat with the garment above. You know, I've sewn with a flatbed machine for so long. And uh, if you have a free arm, this might be a little bit like easy to forget. Or if you have an iron that has the tongue, which would be really handy in this case. Nose, tongue, I don't know what it's called, some body part. All right. Let's sew it and hem it. Okay, Adina. Oh, interesting. <laughs> Kelly, it's me, same, same. <laughs> Aw. <laughs> Hi, Shims kids. <laughs> Yeah, right, Aisha. That's that's us too. I, I think someday, like my parents, when they bought their house, it came with a, a the a, like a water softener, probably like to to the water to the house, so not on every faucet. All right. So when you start, I'm at the. This is the underarm right here, and so remember, I offset my seams there, so you can see one's pointing one way, one's pointing the other way to the, to reduce the bulk. So when I start here, make sure those seams are still lined up. Cause remember we're down here now. Make sure they're lined up on top of each other. They kind of want to nestle, they kind of, it helps, you know? And then now all you're doing right now is stitching to the left of your easing stitch, 
and making sure this fabric edge is right on the edge. We're not, we're not taking no for an answer on this. And I'm pulling my fabric really firm. Someone once told me that they imitate my hands to get certain things. And this is a good one. I do a lot of things without thinking and I wish I could remember what I'm doing to say what I'm doing, you know, but I'm gonna pull this fabric so that it stays nice and flat, right? There's a tuck, but if the tuck is in this first seam, not the seam I'm doing now. So we're staying to the left of the easing stitch. It feels like I'm out of bobbin. Am I about, no, okay. And then make sure you're managing this under layer. Like I'm just kind of pulling it like this, you know. Should we make it brighter? I'm gonna pull this layer so that that seam is right on the edge. We trimmed it, so we're not worried about it poking out right now. And the reason I say I'm like pulling it is because it wants to kind of go blump. It wants to just kind of like lap over the edge there because remember, this is a very curved piece going to something that's a different shape to than itself. It sounds like my needle is dull, but I know it's brand new. Maybe it's just the um, tension or something, I don't know. So when I get down here, I'm getting down to the curve of the armhole, right? And I start kind of pulling the fabric like this to kind of get it to where it would look like as if it were on the body. See that little curve right there? And then this is how I can kind of prevent that torquing that happens in the seam allowance. So here we are right at the beginning. Meet it and back stitch. All right, and so now we have our set in sleeve. And then the best part is when we go to remove the gathering stitch, but I did I, I didn't pay attention. Did I pull from uh, this side or the other side? You don't have to remove it, I just like to. Let's see. Let's see if it's poking out here. Oh, here it is. Oh, yay. Just love pulling it out. I like pulling it out too because I think it relaxes those tucks a little bit and the fullness that we've eased in there. Look at that. Beautiful. Look at that. Nice. And right, let's get rid of the bobbin thread right here. Yeah. It's like the peak of satisfying. All right, so now let's do the other one. I'll brighten this one up a little bit. <laughs> Rebella's telling me. I, you know what I have been, I've, I've actually, um, I don't feel like I'm that rebellious until I think about how often I question everything. <laughs> And right now I'm doing this a lot because I'm teaching a pants fitting course right now, right? I have never taught pants fitting. I never really like thought much about it. I just knew how to fit them and I fit them for me. And um, I got into this home sewing world and I'm like, oh, this is a big topic here, you know? And I started looking at all the pant fitting videos and my head kind of started spinning. So I was just like, oh, I can't remember all these things. Like there's so many things to remember and it's all really good information. It's all really accurate. I just didn't know they had these names and these like methods and, um, and like, I was just thinking about one last night because I keep seeing the one where like, say this is the crotch curve right here. Wait, do I have a picture of one? This one. I, in fact, I almost messaged Libby. All right, is this gonna be dark enough? All right, so this is the back, right? This is the one I was thinking about. And so you know how sometimes people get all this bagginess right here? It's fitting great right here, really baggy right here. And so there's this thing where you cut here, you cut here, you cut here, right? And then you slice all these and then you overlap this fisheye right here, right? This is so common. People teach this all the time. And every time I see it, I'm like, but that changes a few things, right? It changes a few things and it doesn't necessarily take it right here. And what happens, so I, today at breakfast, 
I think I am. <laughs> um, at breakfast today, I was sitting out there on the dogs and with the dogs, and I had a little miniature pant, and I cut it up, and I did this, and then I traced it before I did it, and I tra traced it after I did it, and this is what it did. It did this, and this, and I was like, I don't know about that. So then I was looking at another one. The, the hilarious thing was I found all these on someone's Pinterest who followed me on Pinterest in the so so. <laughs> so I was like, ooh, look at all this pants fitting stuff they pinned. I'm gonna look through here. So I was looking at it, and the other one led me to this article about literally taking out a fisheye right here. And at the end of the day, what you did was you sliced across, you pleated it, right? So you took this parallel line, right? So now you've removed this. You know what happens then? What happens is that you create a gap right here and a gap right here. Then you fill this in. Wait, was that what happened? Yeah, then you fill that back in. And I was like, but now you've made your inseam and your outseam longer and the front sews to those. Why does that work? So, I don't know. These are the things I think about. And I woke up thinking about that this morning. I was like, oh, God, thank God it's morning. I can go and try this out because it was really bugging me. Anyway. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I definitely need more friends. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like, you can do those things, and it's like, yeah, that'll work, but it has to sew to the front. You can't just all of a sudden make the inseam longer. Because you know what happens? This is what happens. If you make the outseam longer, right? You're like, okay, I'm just going to make the front match it. Great. Okay, so now we're, we're doing it to the inseam. Um, what happens is you, if you say you can't change the inseam length, right? You can't just keep adding. It won't fit. So then you trim it off the bottom. You've just changed the pant to go like this, the grain line. So I need to look into it better and go, all right, what's really happening here? It's one thing for someone to write a blog and say, this is what you do, fa la 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 la. <laughs> but they don't ever tell you what to do with the inseam and the outseam. And so that's where I get a little bit like, what am I missing here? Because I just do it, I just take it off the length or the width where you need it, you know? You can't just take it off right there like that without affecting things, so. Yeah, that doesn't work, Kelly. That makes the inseam too long. I mean, it works. Oh, I'm not gonna get into this right now. I'm living, eating, breathing, sleeping, pants fitting right now. So when I do that, I, you can add, but, oh yeah, I think I'm too hungry to explain it. Um, <laughs> I just lost my little thing, it broke. Where is it? Do I have another end? Please tell me. We really love, this is the icing on the cake. I live for this, where is it? Please, please. Dang it. I think I missed out on my opportunity to do that. Oh well. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Ooh, is that it? I found it. Oh, I love that book. That book is so great. And they don't, they don't do um, the one I was just telling, showing. They don't do that. Yeah, I've noticed, Jim. The full tummy adjustment, but if you do it this way, you actually put the, the, the girth you need. And a lot of people put this wedge like this. And what happens is you've lengthened the front rise, and that's fine if you need that. But you're totally right. No, I love that book. That book's amazing. They're very logical about how you add things, and they don't sit there and get hung up on certain things. I really love it. Okay. Um, 
Let's hem. Let's figure out this vent. Let's figure out this vent. All right, so we need to clip this seam allowance. Terry, <laughs> I just do this right. I'm gonna clip that to there. Yeah, I'm just doing it. I need my scissors. Those have kind of lost their tip. I'm just gonna clip the vent to the where I sewed to let it hang free, right? So here it is hanging free now, like that, All right? Let's do the other one. Okay. Just pulling it apart like this. Boop. Boop. A front butt and a back, a back button, <laughs> a back butt. <laughs> Clip and finish mint. Okay, so that is how, okay, that's how I do it. So there's not some sort of like mysterious thing of to do it so that you get that top slant finished, right? <laughs> oh my God, I have the worst keyboards and every time I'm in a stream, I just, I just want to bang my head against the keyboard because one of them will put, it's just, they're both really weird. They don't, they're just not good. I stopped just pressing enter now. You know? <laughs> All right, so here's our dart or our, our vent. Oh, I need to clip. So I have to clip down to the seam though, the, the actual main seam too, right, Terry? Please say yes, please say yes, please say yes. So now it's hanging free. Oh, I don't like that. That's not right. That's not right. That's not right. Oh. oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. But, okay, this is correct. However, the seam needs to go past this little clip I just did. So if you're doing a French seam, vent like this the notch to stop sewing was right here on the pattern and i didn't stop there i stopped up here where the angle started so if you're doing a french seam stop oh, like three eighths of an inch quarter inch above that little angle St stop sewing um is that what i want to say no you want to go past yes yeah yeah yeah, yeah. wait Wait, let me tell you the right order. <laughs> yeah, actually just don't stop there. Stop a quarter inch past the angle. That's what it is. <laughs> All right. So like that, see, right? Because we need this to be clipped We need this to be clipped to the last seam we sew. However, we need the seam to go past that point. Yeah, this isn't set up for this and um, that's what made me a little bit nervous, you know? I should have figured this out before I started today. So let's go a little past that point there and then I'm gonna clip it to the seam. Oof. Get myself into a pickle here, probably. Get rid of all these back stitches. And now let's go and iron this and then we can sew it. You taught you saw a half inch above the angle to vent. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that sounds familiar. It's not like we do these a lot, you know? All right, so now we have our side seam here. Got our center front. That's 
I don't think I have any uh, buttons for this. Maybe I do. Maybe I have the same ones that I did on that shirt. All right, so I'm just gonna iron this all back just so I kind of know about where I want everything to finish. I'm gonna press that seam down. And so I think another important thing to think about with these is that you want your vents to both be the same length. Unless your vent's not, you know, the same length. Because <laughs> sometimes the back is a little longer, right? So we want it to be, so this is another good chance to kind of go, okay, let's set this up now. I rarely have pressed my hems first, but when there's a vent, I usually do because um, of this exact reason to get them to match from back to front. This is prime burn my arm type of ironing, <laughs> I can tell. I know exactly how it starts. Really wish I could give like my kingdom for some steam right now. All right. Okay, let's press that side seam towards the back a little bit, get it nice and flat. And then we're gonna press this open, press this up. There's a weird funky fold in that from the washing machine. Kenny Wong of Itch to Stitch. Oh, Kenneth Wong of Itch to Stitch. <laughs> Oh, neat, Terry. You're pro at this. This is one of those things that as soon as I finish, I'm like, oh, that's how I would have done it. You know? All right, let's make sure. This one's a little deeper right here. Blend it in to there. We can trim it down. Probably a wrinkle. My cutting, because <clears throat> the fabric wasn't perfectly ironed when I cut. I got this little extra here. Let's just trim it down since all the others are pretty good. To tie on your darn, oh, um, well, I, my iron's pretty good. It's pretty clean. It's not bad. Is the tough one prevented from burning me? <laughs> That's really what I'm thinking about. Um, oof, it's so tempting to miter this corner. You know what I mean? Mmm. Mmm. My tur, my tur. Let's see. I don't know if I have the my the bandwidth in me to do that right now, though. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> the Reynolds, um, the Reynolds dress. It does prevent it from. Oh, I do need that. Yeah, I, oh, if I knew how many times I've burned myself since I started ironing when I was a teenager, it's embarrassing. The, so I used to just had this really terrible habit in high school where I would iron on the floor, on the carpet. How my mom never figured this out and said, uh, no, because it wasn't like the iron was wool, you know, it, it was meltable, right? So I would... And so I would sit with my legs straddle like this and iron. This is terrible. I can't even believe I did this, but 
and the number of times I would move my iron and I would go up my calf or my inner thigh and I had burns there. Teenagers, man, total brainless being sometimes. <clears throat> yeah, that was me. That was me. All right, so I'm gonna fold under this hem. Let's just um, undo it a little bit here. Get it nice and folded like this. There we go. Now push it back in there. Baby Ceremony was dumb too, you know? <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna start. So one of my little things I love is um, starting doing this stitch completely. Oh wait. I'm not going up this. I'm going to start here. I'm going to start right here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like it to look seamless, but we'll put our back stitch right here and then we'll go around the entire edge. I think I'm going to go, can I do this? Let's see. I'm going to try and do the whole thing, including top stitching the collar in one stitch. All right, so let's fold the vent back. I'm going to poke in this little tail of the vent. Go around. And then back up, back down here, tuck in this little tail. And I may go back, because sometimes I'll stitch these little openings closed. You see it a lot now, um, and in menswear especially. Just go around and hem the whole thing. This thread's connected, so we'll just tuck it in there. How's the lighting? <sighs> I like it when the hem folds the same amount twice and you fill the hem with fabric. I, my theory is that it take it needs less ironing out of the wash when it's like that. Let's get rid of these threads here. So yeah, that Reynolds dress by Helen's Closet has a really big vent, angled vent, and it's mitered. And it's really fun to sew. This side's always thicker. Or wider, I should say, not thicker. All right, we're almost to the front now. All right, so I'm gonna go all the way to the center front edge. Hmm. You know what? I would really like to top stitch this from the right side. So I'm gonna stop right here and then flip it and do, I was gonna do the whole thing, but um, I would like the um, to top stitch the center front and the collar from the right side, you know? All right, so.
This navy blue thread is not very navy blue on this navy blue. <laughs> There's a piece of tape right here. All right, so let's get this. I'm gonna do it. Hmm. Not right on the edge, but close. And I'm always like sweeping the fabric this way to prevent any torquing. Oh, now ironically, when we get to the collar, we'll be on the under collar. It's by no bow nah. Oh, the little Teflon thing. I mean, what page though? No, I'm just teasing. <laughs> Every time I go to buy something from them lately, it's out of stock. But it is creepy how fast it gets here to me. It gets here like the next day. I'm just getting that corner a little better right here. Doesn't really want to look like a corner for some reason. So let's poke this in a little bit like that. Poke that out. We'll make it look like a corner. All right, and so now with this facing, I'm gonna reach under there and pull the facing because you know, you're trying to get this stacked right on top of itself, right? You don't want the facing to kind of blump under up above the neckline. So I'm gonna go up to the shoulder seam like this. Hmm. I don't like the way this top stitches. Oh well. Oh well. I feel like this is pretty essential doing this little neckline part right here. But the problem with this type of top stitching. You know what? I should have top stitched the collar before I attached it. I was thinking incorrectly that um, I needed it loose, so I couldn't do that. That was wrong. Top stitch your collar before you put it on because um, then the uh, um, start and stop will be in the seam allowance. Mine's not gonna be, unless I just don't top stitch it, which is totally possible. Some of my favorite collars aren't top stitched and they just kinda, they look like kind of like magic, you know? All right, again, I'm just doing that sweeping thing because remember my machine's pushing the fabric toward me like this, right? So I'm just doing this while I sew to kind of counteract that. Let's look at this corner. Oh, you know what I didn't do? Big no-no. I didn't check my center front plackets. <laughs> wow. I can't believe I didn't do that. Oh wait, how'd I start on the other side? Meh. Yeah. Shoot, I gotta take out a few stitches. Dang it. I always jinx myself with these continuous stitches. I needed to turn faster, to turn sooner. At least it's navy blue and it won't be obvious. And now I line it up with the hem stitching. All right. Get rid of all your threads. Where's my other one? Here's one. And I think there's one down here, right here. Everywhere I start, you, you get to know your machine, right? <laughs> Oh, that, those are really cool. The one that, um, don't you iron them or something? Yeah, right, Nancy? Exactly. Okay. Um, yeah, I think I can get away with not top stitching the collar. So see, if you had top stitched the collar first, 
it would be in the seam allowance, you know. But now we have our little collar. All right, what's left? There's our placket, it looks pretty good. You see continuous stitching all the way around. Boop, 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 boop. Notches sewing, it's not so long. Okay, thanks, I'm gonna check it out. That's a good name. Oh, here, oh no, it's just a thread. So I think I'll edge stitch these little um, hems. You could hand some if you wanted. I like to close them because I don't like the corner to poke out. This is definitely kind of a ready to wear thing. I don't think it's really necessary. I like it. And of course it's gonna be on different ends from each other. It's really not that noticeable. It's kind of like, you know how I uh, top stitch seams down when I'm doing elastic? It's kind of like that kind of um, finishing technique. You don't know why ready to wear works really good until you're like, that's it. <laughs> I thought that was something they did because they were cheating. Well, they kind of are. <laughs> they do it because it works. <laughs> It's not cheating if it works. All right, so we just have the sleeve hem. I pressed my seam allowance toward the front. So this seam, um, this seam allowance on the sleeve seems a little bigger. Do I have the directions? I kind of want to look at them. Is it bigger? Oh yeah, it is. There's a workshop, yes. Is it in one hour? Oh my God, I still need to eat lunch. <laughs> oh, that's funny. <laughs> what are the odds? There's two of you. There's two Martinas sometimes too. One of them is Martina. She was here earlier. And the other one, her username isn't Martina, but I, um, we, I know her as that because, I don't know, because she's, she's in other spaces, like Instagram and the Guild, I think. All right, so we're just going to turn this up three eighths and then you turn it up a one and a quarter. You're going to be easy on me in the workshop today, right? <laughs> I, I'm glad you guys just let me do this whole shirt today. I know it's a little bit long. Next week is a sponsored stream. I'm doing the summer pants by Wardrobe by Me. Men's as, all, as well. I didn't think my husband was gonna be on board with these and I, he, I think he really is. All right. Uh. I should turn this the other direction, but I'm feeling like I just want to be done. <laughs> Doing it blind there. <laughs> oh yeah, I didn't do a very good job, did I? <laughs> do, do, do. It'll need buttons and buttonholes. I can do those in a workshop someday. I'm allowed to sew in those too, right? <laughs> this is my poor husband, you know, like he does most of the cooking, you know. I think the last three nights in a row, I'm like, oh, I'm not hungry because I ruined dinner by eating at three o'clock, eating lunch at three o'clock, you know. 
and he goes to bed and gets up earlier than me, so it's kind of funny. I'm like, sorry. It's gonna be another one. But I also knew that um, I'd be hungry after the workshop today. Okay. I didn't do the second fold on the side, right? Nope, okay. I just did one and then left it. Like this. More like that. A little easier to do it from the inside like this. Can't see very well though. <laughs> Chat and chew. <laughs> Not if Shem has his way. <laughs> he has some sleeve questions he would like to see me about. All right. Yeah, and I want to get your guys' opinion on that fabric for that pant form. What's visible? All right, that's good enough. Oof, that is good enough. You're just probably waiting for the button placement for guys with man boobs. Oh, are you? <laughs> fullest part of the chest. You always put your button at the fullest part of the chest, but um, you can put it wherever you want. I just did this whole buttons and buttonholes skill building session Self-proclaim. I am no guru. I am the only, I am only the guru of how to pick a ripe watermelon. So yeah, with the button placement, it's the same with anyone with boobs. They, it's, Good to put it in the fullest part of the chest, right? So you don't get the gaping. Um, and then the problem with this sometimes is that it offsets the spacing above it because you're like, well, I would really like that first button to be right at the top. But if I were to space my buttons between here and here, it's this really awkward amount in between each button. It makes it too many buttons or too few buttons. And so, You've just got to, yeah, exactly, Kelly. Yeah, so you've just got to figure out maybe you can take the top one down a little bit um, or make your spacing a tiny bit different from the lower half. But in general, I let this dictate where I put that first one. And in my experience, especially like on a button down shirt, like with a collar, collar stand, the full shebang, if, um, you don't need that collar that that collar stand to have a button and buttonhole. I just skip it. I don't know anyone who buttons it, right? Exactly, Adina, or a big belly. Yeah, and the Simflex is really awesome for that. I love that thing for that. So, um, and then where this first button goes below the collar stand line, if that's what you're working on, um, that seems like that can be anywhere from a half inch to three and a quarter inches. I saw this really fascinating article um, on where guys liked, it was about guys, where guys liked that first button. And then they had all these um, really helpful photos showing like where this, that little weird gape, that little wrinkle will happen when they have this button and this button buttoned the ones on the shirt not the stand but the shirt so in the same with uh, if you have the shirt let's just say you have the stand button done the next button on your shirt if it's too low down you get this weird buckle right and if it's too high up it may be weird when the collar stand button is open so there's all this weird weird like stuff that comes into play and it's really personal on where someone likes it all right shim Sounds good. You're a gadget geek. So is Nancy. In fact, if any of us are wondering about what gadget, if the gadget's good, we ask her. <laughs> yeah, that Simplex is great. You might like the Guild, Kelly. I think you'd like it. 
Um, I think we even have a gadget topic. Did I really iron this that far away? Here we go. Let's, we'll just kind of... Yeah, I'm not going to put buttons and buttonholes on this. So I'm glad you asked if that is why you're staying. Because uh, I was, I was going to... I'm almost done with the stream. So... Uh, not my uh, most straight ironing of that hem. I may have to redo that one. <laughs> Let's check it out. Put it on my dress for him, but it won't fit. I'm definitely bigger than him. So I still need to tack down this little shoulder thing. So normally I would do that stitch in the ditch type of thing and here, I don't know if I would or not. I might, I might, but I may just do a few hand stitches there. I'm usually a like no hand stitching ever, you know? And it's like a game for me to figure out how to do it without hand stitching. All right. That looks pretty cute. I like it. There's my, nobody will ever know. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I'm not a big social media fan, but um, I'm spending all my time in there now. It's just like so chill. I'm kind of like that though, you know. Just, what is this right here? Oh, okay. Yeah, this turned out really nice. Here's the vent right here. Oh, you know what I didn't check? I'll check it just to keep me accountable. The placket length. Should have done this a very long time ago. I'm embarrassed that I didn't do this. Oh, I lucked out. The other thing to check is your placket depth right here from the collar to the edge. And you can see, look, mine is about an eighth of an inch off. You see that? If you're getting a really big difference, you may have to change it. So it's good to check that early on. Certain things I just forget to check anymore. I've gotten consistent enough in other areas, but um, it, you should never let your guard down. It's That's just lazy of me to do that. So, all right, he likes his to button uh, left over right, just like this. Okay, this collar, yeah, it works. I mean, especially because it's open. I'm not sure, you couldn't, this kind of collar, remember how I was like, oh, this collar point right here. This works because this kind of collar, you don't button like this, all the way like this. It would have to be drafted differently. It works because I'm holding it up. But if this were flat on someone, it would probably pull really weird. You're not supposed to, so it's supposed to be like that a little bit. Very cute. Yay. Love this fabric. Let's see our pleats. Right there. Yeah, it did turn out nice. I'm happy with it. This is one of Libby's favorite shirts too. I know she was talking about it once. I think if you don't have a really long neck or you don't have much of a neck, this kind of collar is really great because then you don't have this collar kind of pushing up against your hair or your ears or, you know, just kind of taking up all the space right here. Um, and it is, it sits kind of lower, closer to the body. So it's great for that. And you, you can take the collar stand off of a button down, just sew it without it. It doesn't always sit perfectly, but it'll be close. So defeats having a camp collar. Yeah. <laughs> All right, you guys, I'm heading out. Thanks for letting me sew this whole thing. Um, I'll be here next week on when, ooh, Wednesday. Ooh, what day am I here next week? Thursday. I think it's Thursday, Saturday, Thursday, 11 a.m. Pacific. Sewing the Summer Pants by Wardrobe by Me, also a men's pattern. This one comes in kids pattern, kid sizes as well. 
Oh, and I actually am an affiliate for them. So if you're thinking about buying one of their patterns, you can use it and I get a little percentage. You don't have, if you don't remember though, don't worry about it. So, all right, you guys, thanks for coming. Nice to see you all. Sorry, I'm not streaming that much. Yeah, nice seeing you, Walter. Thanks for the donations. I really appreciate it, you guys. Very generous. Thanks. Appreciate it. I definitely will be buying some notions with those, so. <laughs> All right, you guys. See you guys soon. Where's my thingy? There it is. <laughs> Bye.